All right. We are live. Myth Vision Podcast, baby. It's early in the morning. I'm on the East Coast in the U.S. I have Hanny Salem. Is it Salem Selim? How do I pronounce it properly? Salim. Okay. How are you doing, my brother? Not too bad. It's uh, almost uh, two thirty a.m. in the morning in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, nice, cool night. So, looking forward to to this chat for sure. Hey, I got to give shout out Zagros in the house. Of course, that's the label they're going to give you or me if they're like extreme fundamentalists. But thank you for being here, uh, Michael Caruso. Myth points, please. You you can have some myth points, my friend. You can have them. And friendly Muslim myth point. He does. He does them here, third place. Yes, yes, yes. And look, I don't turn away my fourth place, people. So, Robert, welcome. Melody, it's great to see you. Everybody in the chat, Neophyte One, Byron, I will eventually open up to have uh, calls if you're interested interested in, like, coming and challenging or giving a high five to Hanny towards the end. I'd like to have Muslim callers, but we'll allow this show to get to that point. We'll have a lot more viewers by the time we get there. So it'll just be interesting to hear what you have to present. But before we do, I must plug our dear guest, Hanny. He has a YouTube channel, Critical Faculty, and he has interviewed some of the top, top scientists. And tell us about your channel a little. Well, it, it stems from my view about religion. Um, I wanted to tackle religion slightly differently. I'm not an enemy of religion. I understand religion in the context of uh, this was the type of epistemology that people had access to at the time. I just don't think it's a, it's good anymore. It's uh, mm -hmm. served its purpose, uh, and I think we need to evolve it into something completely different. So my uh, uh, tackle of, is of angle of empathy. Uh, I understand. I understand what people need to achieve. I understand that the transition uh, takes a while. Uh, but um, if, if the claims are going to be accurate, especially if there are scientific claims uh, within the Quran, and I'm um, an avid lover of science, uh, I'm interested in all things science, uh, from biology to uh, cosmology, um, I focus so much in that area. And uh, today is uh, obviously shows about that, is, is um, comparing certain claims and how they were understood at the time with uh, today's uh, knowledge, scientific knowledge, to be precise. That's going to be fun, especially you're the big science guy. You love getting into science and diving deep. So I hope people will go subscribe. I did pin your YouTube channel at the top of the comment section, and it is in the description. So let's get it. Next thing I want to talk about is he has, for those who want to support what he's doing, a Patreon and uh, this is a way of obviously funding so he can keep interviewing some of the academics. Let me tell you firsthand, I say this all the time, most people don't even realize this. Every Super Chat, every Patreon like member, every like all of this stuff that looks like, oh, this is just going into the pocket. And I am investing into academics that come on the channel. I pay scholars and there's some scholars, I won't name names, where it is literally $500 just to get them on for one episode, okay? Mm -hmm. This is just the way the cookie crumbles. It's the way the world spins. Uh, and to get some of these names on there, that's just how, um, if you want a good show and you want to bring on certain people, you don't have to bring them on. We you don't need them if you don't want to. But I say that to say, like, this is what we do. And so you are spending your own hard-earned money uh, in investing in many of these academics that you have on your channel. So I wanted to plug your Patreon. Yeah, thank you very much. And just to put this in context, Brian Green, uh, the um, uh, cosmologist, is coming to Melbourne, Australia. And to just to go and see him on stage, uh, you have to fork out about $300 or $400. And uh, in today's world, to be able to sit in your pajamas uh, on the couch and sipping some coffee and, and uh, interacting with academics online, uh, the comforts of your comfort of your living um, uh, area, uh, and and just uh, you know uh, chatting and and uh, asking a question for uh, spending five or ten dollars that is that is yeah. fantastic and to be able to do that these days. Yeah, and I, someone asked that someone mentioned Dr. Bart Ehrman. Uh, it's it's more than that actually. Uh, he, <laughs> I know. He's, he's, I actually, know. He's, he's actually the most expensive uh, academic I've had on the channel actually. And if it weren't for crowdfunding, I would not have ever interviewed him, just being honest. Uh, I couldn't. Yeah. I'd read his books and commentate on them or have others talk with me on it. But uh, I am very privileged to be able to have him be able to join me and stuff because we have great fans. So, Hanny, thank you so much for joining us. I finally will mention, if I will, uh, my Patreon. 
I have a video that's coming out soon on the minimal facts, a minimal, you know, there's a minimal facts of Christianity. I created a category that I'm hoping starts to get the coin phrase and that myth visionaries will go out there and start sharing it in the comment sections whenever they're watching videos, whether it be a skeptic channel, Christian channel or whatnot. And I want to talk about the minimal doubts argument. I really want to heighten the doubt even the doubt within the text of the Bible itself, specifically the New Testament, when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus. So I've written an article um, that might find its way on Bart Ehrman's blog. It may not. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's going to be on these things. So anyway, enough about me, enough about that. We're talking about scientific facts in the Quran, and I figure I'd open up with this article that actually was told to me to look at by David Wood and... Michael Jones, and of course I was on with Apostate Prophet, and there's this Wall Street Journal, and on that Wall Street Journal, it talks about Western scholars play key role in touting science of the Quran. And I think there's a man named, uh, well, they call him Mr. Zindani, who was actually friends with Bin Laden before I think all the chaos uh, happened with 9-11, etc. But he was friends with Bin Laden. I did not know this, and neither did the scientist who went over there. But they, like, rolled out the red carpet, had them bring their families, gave them a crystal clocks and all of these things, and said, look, you can bring your science. You can be, be, uh, be critical all you want. This is what they, like, leveraged them with. And like, oh, okay, I could just come and bring science. I don't have anything to worry about. And as soon as they're sitting in the seat, Henny, it's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Open up the Quran. And they're going to go, I'm going to read you a verse and you're going to tell me how this fits into the science type of thing. And it was like a forced cornering. And some of the academics tried to resist, right? They legitimately were like, no. And even if he did know that, he could have found that out from sailors or he could have found that out from oral tradition or whatever. And some of the academics just, I don't know, when you're pressured in a corner by an apologist, you kind of. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm trying to imagine the situation where you're in Saudi Arabia. You're a scientist sitting around, and there are two large men behind you with swords. <laughs> or guns. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It says what you says is say, uh, honey. We're getting out of here. Don't worry. You know, like, no. But I think they, many of them, complimented and said the guy was a really wonderful, nice gentleman. But they were like giving them so many. Um, gifts and and just loving them and they were filming the whole time so you're not going to be like contentious and a, like aggressively resistant to the ideas being put in front of you well many of the these scientists went out and said are you kidding they really duped me into this one and now it's being spread I, the name of this kind of version of evidence they call it just so i have a proper name they, they have a specific uh, bacaliism. Let me actually. Oh, bacaliism. Yeah, that's that's the era. This is the guy who started the whole thing. Okay. Which is ba yeah, basically it started with him um, uh, going to Saudi Arabia and, and there was a huge era of trying to emphasize scientific, um, they call them sometimes facts, sometimes they call them miracles in the Quran or, or references. Uh, and a, a barrage of scientists then start going to King Saud and King Fad um, uh, universities in, in Saudi Arabia uh, and coincided with an Egyptian program called Faith and Science, led by Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, who would have a 45 minutes episode in Egypt. Everybody in Egypt used to wait for him. And he would try to uh, link science and faith in a very twisted way. Um, and if you don't know anything about science, you think, wow, they, my, I'm vindicated, you know, my, my, my faith is, uh, is completely confirmed by the, the recent findings of science. And obviously nobody read anything outside of the Quran anyway, so they wouldn't know better. I, I look, I, I look forward to us getting into the da data here. I really want to type this out here real quick so that everybody knows right now. Uh, this is how I roll, bro. I, I, you know me, you know me. Okay, uh, please go subscribe to Holy Humanist. Oh yeah, please go subscribe. Like hey, she's kicking butt. <laughs> she's. I, I had to post it right. I like so people can go and subscribe. If you're watching this at any point after this live or during this live, please go subscribe to her. 
She needs all the love she can get, just like we all need it, right? Especially when we're doing things that are controversial. So go show her some love. Thank you. She says, I'm so pumped for this. Laugh out loud. It will be sheer entertainment and so satisfying for the debunking to begin. Thank you for doing this. So much love and kudos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, um, yeah, I just hope people will go and show her some love for that. Thank She's you. She's fantastic. We're going to do some work in May together anyway. Yeah. She's brilliant. She is. I had to make this long drawn out because this is, there's a lot more behind all oh, scientific fact debunking in the, in the Quran. There's a whole apologetic and it's become so popular that there's even people on TV over in some of these more predominantly Islamic countries that are pushing and spouting these things, which is no wonder so many people in my chat that do show up to defend the Quran are trying to sh start with scientific fact, this scientific fact that it's, it's, it's become a thing. So would you like to share your screen and get into start? Well, before, before I start, I want to just um, have a precursor and I want to have a background to this. Um, not all Muslims subscribe to this sort of scientific saga. Some very reasonable people of the faith, they understand that uh, their beliefs is predicated on um, uh, um, unjust, unjustified true belief. <laughs> they don't need right. to be uh, justification for it. They don't need scientific miracles for it. They understand that this is a matter of faith and rightly so. And I actually have lots of respect for these other people. They don't try to twist the word so much. They say, look, I believe it. It makes me comfortable. It makes me a better human being. Leave me alone. Right. I have lots of respect for these people. Um, there are other people who would need uh, signs. And this will lead me to the very reason why we're we having this uh, chat in the first place. Uh, the very reason why we're having this chat in the first place is because God has chosen a certain way to convey his message to the world. Um, he's always chosen to have a, a single individual somewhere on a mountain, inside a cave, uh, inside someone's head and whisper to them the truth and ask them to convince everybody else. <laughs> well, I could, he could have done that uh, to everybody. He's almighty, he's an all, all powerful. He could have downloaded uh, in our thoughts, just like Satan can do, uh, speaks to you directly without having to have a translator or, or interpreter in, 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 in between. So his way of conveying his one true word has led to people asking for, for evidence. Right. And some of the evidence is, is, okay, tell me something we didn't know before. And there are claims in the Quran uh, that there are certain revelation um, a human would know. It Only God would have known at the time. It, it was not a knowledge prevailed at the time. And unfortunately, 90% um, of the miracle claims or the scientific facts claims fall on their faces, just on the back of that particular mm. argumentation. That's why I actually do the, uh, I did a short recently. If I might tease our audience with it, why not? I mean, just to, just to get them real quick. Okay. When you have revelation, private revelation like this, claiming that it's from a specific guy, man, you have to be really somehow convinced by the message, the people who are telling you this somehow that whatever they said helped you, you know, you could, there are plenty of messages out there that help people with living their lives and whatnot. But this was the question that I had in particular. And I'll go ahead and play this. Now that I've recently taken interest in Islam and the history of the Quran, et cetera, et cetera, I have some people who have criticisms. Why are you defending Christianity? When I point out the simple fact that in the Quran, it talks about how God made people believe, made it look like Jesus was actually crucified when he really wasn't. Not all Muslims believe that's the proper interpretation. However, in 2 Thessalonians 11, the Muslims will quote from the New Testament to point out, look, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believe the truth but have delighted in wickedness my question is if your god is willing to have people believe in a lie or send them a lie let's say christianity was all a lie and that everyone who's a christian is really blind and they're following a lie therefore they're going to be condemned and damned by your god how do you know you're not being tricked how do you know your god's not playing a trick if he's able to do that with that many human beings on planet earth how do you know you're not also being duped into the same thing so I made that little, why not, you know, let it like, how do you know, how do you know if your God's willing to make most people on planet earth? And this is me as a Calvinist. I was a Calvinist Christian. Like that's exactly what the Bible taught to me was that very few find the path of heaven. 
everyone else is damned. Okay. Like, how can I know that that's true? If he's willing to cook most of the human race in an everlasting post-mortem eternity. Well, Derek, the, there is an explicit verse in the Quran. It says, and they deceive and God, God deceives and he is the best of the, de the, de the deceivers. So, I mean, it's explicit. He can do that if he wants to. <laughs> so how do you know you're not being deceived is the question. And it's not, I don't have no proof to say, oh, I know you are. I'm saying like, we don't have critical faculties naturally. And that's the name of your YouTube channel. So I just wanted to show that to get everybody on board. We do have a super chat real quick before we get into any of the content you're going to show. Religion sure. has a fine print. Mind your mind or your mind is mine. <laughs> Morpheus, that's a wonderful phrase. Thank you so much for the super chat. Good to see you, Mr. Morpheus. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> mind that's your mind hard. or your mind is mine. That's exactly that, that, right. That should be trademarked. Uh, I love that quote. <laughs> right? It really is. Thank you so much again for the support. Let's get into these scientific facts and see if the Quran supports them. Sure. So we were going to, I've got 13, but I don't think we can cover them in one area, especially we're going to take some calls. So I've decided that we're going to go for six today, six, okay. the six meteor ones. Um, and I'm going to start sharing the information here. And welcome everybody to the chat, brother Ben, Ray Ashima, scholar, vid, Carl, soapy, Soapy Khan. Um, everybody, thank you. All right, here we go. It's on like Donkey Kong. Right. This, this is the uh, sort of the part one. So I'm going to probably split it into two parts, um, covering six today. And I am going to start with um, uh, the, the first the criteria. What is it? What is a miracle? Because uh, for me, uh, they don't really qualify as miracles because they're not suspension of um, of natural order or natural laws. To me, they're more like prophecies. So I never understood why they call them miracles in the Quran, because all what they're trying to do is trying to tell you, well, God has knowledge that you don't have of something to come or something to be revealed or discovered later on. And therefore, it's more, it's more for me, it's more of a prophecy rather than, um, than a miracle, because you are discovering a scientific um, uh, fact, uh, uh, this sort of explained by nat natural order, and therefore they shouldn't be falling under a miracle in first in the first place. You're just unveiling um, um, a natural order that you did not understand or know about in, to, to begin with. So for me, the, the the claim of a miracle makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, more of, more of a prophecy. However, um, if this is going to be a claimed prophecy as such, it needs to fall under three criteria uh one that that knowledge never exists existed prior prior to the revelation it's unambiguous clear and has no other possible meanings and must uh be verifiable by science uh, and uh, you'll, you'll find that the vast majority will struggle with the, with the very first premise um so we'll go to the uh first one which is to do with embryology um now uh, this is very, let, let me very... share my screen because let me tell you that it's going to come sure. up full screen. Notice that. So this makes it better, a little bit sure. bigger for everybody. All right. So you're going here, right? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, so this is very straightforward. Uh, the, the, um, the claim that the Quran has only the, uh, sort of the, the source to, to understand these things about the development of the fetus within uh, the womb. Um, and uh, the the development of the uh, the cartilages and, and and the flesh and things like that, they were known centuries before, and these are multiple uh, uh, other sources from different areas. Uh, the Shusharuta in India, um, this guy was a, the, the godfather of uh, of medicine in, in India. Hippocrates in, Gr in Greece, Aristotle, um, he's the godfather of embryology in Greece. Charaka in India, again, he was a, he was a surgeon. And Galen in Greece, which is, uh, and he's highlighted in yellow because he's the closest. If you compare his writings to the Quran, is it's exactly almost the same, including the inaccuracies 
<laughs> because at the end of the day, it's actually scientifically inaccurate because the Quran claims that the uh, the, the bones form first, you got a skeleton and it gets covered by flesh, which is incorrect. Incorrect. Uh, the mesoderm uh, and the things that give rise to, to the, the, the muscle tissues, there's no such thing as flesh in science. It's really muscle tissue that sort of develop into that sort of uh, uh, flesh tissues that we, we, we have later on. And so is the cartilages, which are the precursor of bones, of uh, solid bones to be formed later on. These are uh, simultaneously uh, formed. Uh, so that it's also incorrect scientifically. So uh, it, it fails two criteria of the uh, of the criteria we sort of uh, stipulated to start with. Uh, Real quick, just just yeah. just so we let our audience know that uh, we got a good little point here. Someone brings up Myth Vision Podcast. If miracle is the opposite of science, then scientific miracle sounds like a contradiction. While I would agree, the point they're trying to make, just so everybody understands properly, is they're acting like in the sixth, seventh century, if you will, the the book knows science that it shouldn't know. So the miracle isn't. Um, is, is this something that happened that we like walking on water or a guy rising from the dead? This is like an anachronism of saying, how did you know that the frontal lobal cortex is where the, where you have your dreams. And if you cut this certain, you know, like, like this is stuff we only discovered more recently but, in the last but you know, few years. He's actually absolutely spot on. It's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a scientific uh, uh, miracle. Uh, that's why I call it prophecy. It's more right, fitting right. as a prophecy. It's not a miracle. Because once you say it's a miracle, it means it's it's a suspension of the natural law. And, and science can only explain natural laws. So if it's right. unnatural to start with, it can't uh, be scientific. Yeah, I guess that's a better... That's perfect. I mean, that fits exactly in correcting the point is that these are more like knowing about supposed you know waves beneath the ocean or like there's there's finding out science that we can actually validate today that they were making guesses on back in the ancient world the best they could um as if they got it actually correct and this is somehow convincing those who are more evidentialist apologists going out there saying my book is right, and how do you know? It says the tallest tower will one day, and look in Dubai. Don't you see the tallest tower? You know, like ways of confirming their prophecy to claim that their religion's true. And uh, I won't be shocked one day if, and I say if because apostate prophet and other people have different opinions on this, if one day Islam becomes the number one most populated religion in the world, I won't be shocked if that happens. The way that they function as a family, the way they want to populate, the way they want to grow and convince their children to follow in the same footsteps, et cetera. Christianity seems like it's becoming more open to uh, – seems. I'm not saying every Christian out there, but it's it's accepting more of reality that is in the scientific world around us. And um, I think people are starting to realize, like, what is religion's role in the world? It's not like it once was. So – as far as I was concerned, they're probably going to make the claim, look, we're the number one religion, the most fastest growing religion in the world. That's another yeah. thing I can't, they're going to probably use once they're the most populated. So, And when you think about it, Derek, and if, if the criteria to, to be divine is to reveal information that was not available before, people like um, uh, Isaac Newton and, uh, and Einstein would have been prophets by now because of the, they've actually verifiably revealed information that we did not know uh, before. Are they gods? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or are they prophets and their message is true and what they believe is true? Good point, good point. All right, do I need to go to the next slide? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, that's another cosmological point. This is the one to do with, uh, with water uh, being the... Uh, the origin of everything. Again, uh, this falls the criteria of uh, uh, prior knowledge. Uh, a lot of cultures like the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Chinese, the Egyptians have creation myths that uh, uh, state that water is the origin of everything. Even there are um, uh, biblical, uh, in, especially in Genesis, where the references to water yeah. has given rise to, to um, all, all animals came out of water. Um, the chaos is like literally water and, and the creature in the older Mesopotamian myth, Tiamat. And then there was a creature before that, but specifically the Tiamat creature is a water creature. Like it's, it's, 
a serpent reptilian type creature. Uh, so Leviathan, you know. Yeah. Anyway, Actually, one. I've jumped the gun here because the water was the first part of this verse. Uh, the, this verse is, speaks about um, uh, uh, what it's supposed to be a reference uh, to the Big Bang cosmology. Uh, ah. uh, yeah, which is the separation of heavens and earth. So some Muslims claim that this is reference to the Big Bang where uh, a cosmology right there. And ob obviously, if you read uh, the Big Bang Theory, this is, has nothing, nothing to do uh, with the Big Bang whatsoever. Uh, the, the, big, the, the, the Earth has emerged 9 billion years after the emergence of the universe. Uh, so, the, and, and there was no separation whatsoever. The Earth is just a debris of the uh, of the cosmic debris that sort of was floating around and was gathered by gravity um, at some point. Uh, this is completely and utterly uh, inaccurate scientifically. It's just like there's no there's no way if you've read the Big Bang theory uh, that you can reconcile it with the Big Bang theory. And then the second part, which is going to be in the next slide, which is the one about water. All right. Uh, sorry, that's actually the one about the uh, uh, the expanding universe. So, so is um, it this one? Okay, yeah, I can go back. Yeah. I can go back to. Yeah. Uh, so if you can go back to the the previous one, please. Um, yeah. So this one here in particular is it is no way uh, that this is to do with uh, cos cosmology. Um, uh, this is the other one. This is the expanding universe. Uh, this is the expanding the expansion of uh, space time, um, and there is a, a surah that talks about and and the Arabic here is quite important because if you don't understand if you're not a native Arabic speaker you will not. Uh, have been, hold on, uh, hold on. There's audio issues. Let me make sure. Sure, that we're good. Everybody, is his audio working better? Sing us a tune, Hanny. I'm just kidding. Uh, can you can you hear me? Oh, uh, do we do we do, do the island boys again? <laughs> <laughs> all right are we here let me know if everything's good everybody in the chat say yes 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 or can you hear us guys can you hear us sounds good to me carl said i'm keeping an eye out as soon as someone comments to let us know seems good breaking up someone said audio is fine scholar vid said both are cutting out looks good sounds good to me inquisitive mind we are myth vision <laughs> yes 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 okay cool i think okay. we're back. So, might have been just a small glitch so this is the to do with the expansion of the universe um and um the here the problem is with the arabic word uh if you are not a native arabic, arabic speaker you will not understand the subtle difference this word mosaun uh does not mean somebody who is making the expansion or expanding this is to do with ability uh, and this is reference to God has uh, the might and the power to do certain things. Uh, uh, the 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 Arabic verb that should have been used for somebody who's expanding the universe to be la muasaun, not la musaun, completely different. Even the interpretation at the time of the prophet, and uh, and at the time of like a few couple of centuries after the prophet, all the interpretations uh, were. Um, uh, revolving around uh, God's ability to do certain things. That's the mind. Nothing to do with the expansion of the universe whatsoever. This is a very modern interpretation, and it's really capitalizing on certain similar words and, and scientific theories to say, hey, here we go, we found one. It looks like somebody's always digging in the Quran to find anything that they can latch on to point out to um, a scientific um, Theory. Can can I ask one question here? And this makes me beg the question, right? This we built the universe with great might, and we are certainly expanding it. We, um, I suspect the this obviously, I imagine this is the angels with God or something, because by this time they're not talking about a divine council. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. This is more like the 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 royal we kind of thing. It's it's almost like it's it's very similar to the Elohim situation. <laughs> Or it might be reference to, to multiple gods. That's, uh, yeah, that's why I was mentioning the we yeah. in English. I can't read Arabic at in, all. In, in, in Arabic, you can use a royal we. So this is like a king can use a royal we. Okay. Or a president. You know, well, so that's that, exactly uh, biblical too. The Bible. Yeah, I know. Let us make man in our own. And this is definitely a multiplicity of, 
of divine ones, if whatever you want to call them. So that's why I, I figured they'll probably say angels or something. But this is an issue. And the we are certainly expanding it thing in English. It reminds me of the Bible verse that just simply says God like rolls out the heavens or stretches out the heavens like a scroll. Uh, like a scrolls typically there. And they'll like try to use this. Some apologist will go see the Bible knew that the expanding heavens. Yeah. Yeah, with flat earth cosmology, I mean, come on, or dome, you know, cosmology for the earth, and there's waters above the heavens and things. They have a completely old idea about the world. And uh, so I just I just figured I'd throw that out there. I wonder if this is picking up on the idea of like. But this is what, what this is why why the sort of the holy text is quite ambiguous and it's quite lovely for you to to pick up whatever you want. If you are monotheist, uh, you're talking about the royal we. If you are a, a Christian tr trinitarian, say hey, this is a reference to the Trinity here when we talk about we. This is the three persons. Especially if you're Mormon, there are three separate persons now. We're talking about creating the world uh, or the universe as we speak. So uh, this is how wonderful a long book could be because you can pick and choose and you can explain it in the way you want it to explain, to be explained. Mm. Thank you for that. Want me to move forward? Uh, yeah, sure. I will get to everybody's super chats. Trust me, we won't be too long with the slides. Yeah, th this is recycled. This is not, um, I haven't come up with that. This, is, this has been circulating for a number of years now and it's common knowledge. Uh, uh, this is the water uh, verse. Um, uh, so again, we, we've explained in Genesis one twenty, life emerged from water. So this is old. Uh, in the Old Testament, it's, it's mentioned. Uh, Thales, uh, uh, the, the Greek philosopher, has actually said water is the nature of all things. And this is uh, uh, almost uh, six centuries be, uh, uh, before the Common Era. Uh, Anaximander, uh, also another uh, uh, philosopher, uh, he, he was actually the one that was, was closest to by Genesis. He talked about uh, not just water, but warm water mixed with earth and almost a bit of mud. And that is almost the common uh, by Genesis uh, uh, hypothesis uh, saying that uh, life, the inanimate could have changed to animate or from chemical to biochemical in these kind of conditions. So he was the closest actually. Hmm. Uh, so this, again, this was knowledge was floating around, nothing new. And if you're living in a desert, and you pour some water and there's a plant, of course you're gonna associate water with, with uh, flourishing life. There's, there's absolutely nothing mysterious about that. Just so everybody knows, right here at the bottom beneath the blue are other sources that predate the Quran. So like when you're when you're talking about you know these various other places, especially here you have dates, for example, people will take consideration that like if it's in the air already, why is it miraculous? Even if there is factual accurate, I mean, people are observing the world around them. Like if we lived back then, we would look around and go, you know, huh? I wonder if this is true. You're observing the world around you. It doesn't really take a miracle or anything like that, or even prophecy to come up with some of these things. So. Well, you know, like, like the stages of the fetus, you know, one of the things, you know, people used to abort, you know, abortions were, were, were was something then uh, people used to lose their babies and their surgeries used to be um, uh, undertaken. So you could actually see physically a fetus in a certain time and you can examine it and you can see it for your own eyes. Uh, so why, why is this uh, something that is hidden away from us? We've known that um, Aristotle used to actually dissect uh, fetuses. And, 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 and so that was uh, the sort of thing that was kind of not hidden from us at all. So I never understood why this is supposed to be a mysterious thing. We've, we've known that long before. Thank you. All right. Oh, and one more noticing, and we created from water every living. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'll see that quite a lot in the Quran. It's the royal we. It's uh, obviously the Islam is one of the strictest uh, monotheist religions in the world. Uh, so you, they make a very, very strong case for it. But it's just the Arabic language would use the royal we quite a lot to, okay. to show the, the magnificent, magnificence of God. Uh, this is the iron one, the famous iron one. Uh, again, uh, this is an absolutely uh, distortion of uh, the phenomena. Uh, first of all, we've known uh, that iron comes in meteors uh, from out of space. Uh, I'll put a reference. Ancient Egyptians 
almost 2,500 uh, uh, BCE called iron, the metal of heaven. Because that's how they found us. But actually, that is less than 1% or 2% of the amount of iron um, in, in, on Earth. Uh, iron actually forms uh, on Earth, and it's dated to about 1.8 billion years. Uh, and that's to do with uh, certain um, uh, species that started to use uh, photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis uh, to, uh, to release oxygen into the oceans. And uh, this is how you get the rusting iron that start floating out. And this is where, how you can mine iron. But the vast majority of iron is start, actually started on Earth. And you know, part I think that, and I could be mistaken here, but I did a cosmology show with a guy named Ben who, who like wrote a book. I think his dissertation thesis or his master thesis was on this topic of ancient cosmology in the Bible and in the ancient Near East. But in the Talmud, and the rabbis, the Jerusalem Talmud, which is way before the Quran, also the Babylonian Talmud and others, there is this sense where the rabbis are imagining a solid heavens, like, and it's made of a certain rock of some type of uh, element that might be iron, it might be something else. The point is, is like, it's been floating around. These ideas and, and have been around, nothing new. Like, and why make this a miracle? Why make this a prophecy? What is why? And I, I want to say this up front, too, as you opened up, like you're not against people who have a belief, but the people who typically fall for this are falling for a fundamentalist approach. And and like not all Muslims agree with any of this science in the Quran. Yes. You know, true, true. And by the way, this we sent down uh, anzalna, the Arabic word here. Whenever you see that verb in that particular order, it means we send down from heaven, because this was the same words that talks about the uh, the the food that was descending on the Jews um, uh, when they asked for food. So it was food, clothing, cattle. Would you believe it? <laughs> cattle <laughs> from the sky, um, and and other uh, other things. So, so this is a reference to God sending down as He lives up there in the skies which actually defeats the omniscient uh, situation, sorry, the omnipresent situation. If he's everywhere, why is he sending just down? You know, if he's everywhere, it could be just coming from anywhere. But that's the very traditional way of thinking about God. He's up in the sky, you know, the the, uh, the old reference to God. But the, the omnipresence came a bit later. And um, um, obviously that's in conflict uh, with, with, with somebody just residing in one place and uh, looking down um, at you from uh, from heavens, um, so uh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. That means God is is sort of gifting you these gifts. It doesn't mean necessarily it's come out of space. As I said, the vast majority of iron formed naturally um, on Earth and is part of Earth uh, since one ba billion eight years ago, and it's linked to oxygen. So that that was the issue the other night. I was on the show with Apostate Prophet and we had people calling in and they wanted to talk about how iron comes from heaven. How did they know? It must be a miracle. You know, that they're finding out. And he's like, so so cows, cattle come from heaven as well, because the same things being said. And literally, uh, we're moving on to another topic, like didn't even want to see how that problem is. It, it's It's like you said, it's a gift. It's yeah. idea of God gave you something, be thankful for what you have kind of thing, rather than like, this is a secret code for science that's showing. So do cows live on the moon or on Mars and God brought them to earth? What the heck? You know, like, where do you, where do you draw and, that line? And look at them I in that small reference underneath 2500 BCE, the Egyptians called it the metal of heaven. They knew about it. Mm, mm, mm. What do we do, Hanny? What do we do? All right, moving on. Uh, this is the mountains one, the infamous uh, mountain ones uh, as, as paperweight for Earth. So the Earth, the Earth wouldn't just uh, fly away. <laughs> uh, so this is funny because it's completely, again, another distortion of science. Uh, and it, it, it's the way it's understood that uh, the mountains are there to anchor Earth. So earthquakes won't happen. The problem is earthquakes do happen and they kill a lot of people. <laughs> I think in, in the last 20 years, probably they've killed about 2 million people uh, just on earthquakes. So they do kill people. 
Um, and they actually, uh, they are the byproduct. They are the reason why tectonic plates move and push the earth up. So they were not installed to anchor and stabilize the uh, earth crust. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's the other way around. It's a byproduct. It's a, it's a, it's a consequence to the movement of tectonic plates. And as they meet and collide, they push up and they create mountains. Um, and, and, and earthquakes still happen. So I, I, I don't understand why is this even sort of been talked about. It, do, it doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing, according to the claim. And it's not factual. It's actually incorrect. One thing that comes to mind, too, is these pillars. The idea that the mountains are pillars. It also makes me think of mountains are where gods were in the ancient world as well. And so on top of the pillars would be a throne, I suspect, the idea of God resting on a throne. Um, I'm thinking how would an ancient perceive the world and not think, how does this prove that factually the, Bi the, the Bible or the Quran is actually accurate in this sense? Yeah, this, this is really interesting point that you're bringing up. It's, it's almost like, you know, the, the old um, uh, image of the world, like a dome, and you needed two mountains at the very, at the far end of each of, of the two edges to, to sort of erect uh, the, the sky from, and, and separate it from Earth. This is old, old um, image of, the, of Earth, and, and it's, uh, you know, it was the knowledge at the time, but to claim this has come from God, it's, it's ridiculous. Thank you for that. Melody, good point. We've got cows, Twister. The movie <laughs> god brought you cows down from heaven all right uh yeah it'd be, it'd be like ca cow and aiders instead of uh <laughs> shark what's the tornado shark one yeah oh yeah so i think we went through just these were the ones that we went through just today we didn't want to go too long because i wanted to allow people to call in today um i usually like to do that it's fun to hear people with different opinions whatnot let me get these super chats if that's all right with you sure go back up here get some of these super chats thank you so much for all the super chats the love once again giving shout out to everybody before that i've mentioned holy humanist is in the chat go subscribe to her mr morpheus mind your mind or your mind is mine uh quoting religion d dbr thank you for the super sticker i love seeing you in the chat always coming in here stop scamming man as the Mast Arab pointed out on his channel, the first 19 tafsirs, commentaries of the Quran, took the claim the sun sets in a muddy pool, literally. This is something that gets harped on by... Uh, that's, in, that's indeed true. I mean, this is, this is a, a sort of a very strange area because they, they, there's one reference that the sun has an orbit, which is true, the sun orbits the, the galaxy, uh, but at the same time, it has a, an, a starting point, an ending point, and the um, the ending point is a, is a muddy pool, um, uh, which is a, it's just like a, it's a it's a really funny one. You cannot get around that. It's just right. It's wrong. We we know that that's not what happens, and it's a, it's problematic. <laughs> yeah, and of course, if you want to allegorize, you can. Uh, people want to try to, I mean, but. This is nothing new either. That's why I love studying the Greek myths and understanding why they wanted to, the philosophers wanted to reinterpret Homer, reinterpret all of their stories in light of more recent evidence that looks bad. By the time you get in the second, third century BC and not the eighth century BC, they're already making justified excuses for, well, okay. He didn't really do that. Zeus didn't really come down and do that. This is what it meant or whatever. Um, it's almost like a, it's a case of hindsight is always twenty twenty. You go back and you're trying to say, oh, no, 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 I think, God, that was so wise. They yeah. actually meant that. And you're trying to sort of reflect on your current experience to go back and say that this was an ancient wisdom. And they, how did they know that sort of thing? Right. It's quite interesting you're pointing this out because it took, what, 1,400 years to discover some of these things. And they had no use or need. They didn't even matter for 1400 years till science comes on the scene. Now this book is useful in these places. So now let's show you why this is relevant. If you're taking yeah. their point, everyone's in the dark for, you know, all of this time having no use for these facts that are scientific. And yeah. I would love to hear, this is how silly I think this is, is 
name a single actual scientist who opened the Quran and discovered scientific evidence reading the Quran and going, you know, this book's got a point. I bet you if we investigate this, this, this surah, okay, we'll find out that this is actually scientifically evident. So, okay, yeah. Holy crap, we discovered something we never knew. And, and no, that doesn't happen. But, but you remember, Derek, we've had we've set three criteria to start with, and every single claim so far failed all three criteria. First, there were knowledge that was prevalent. Um, the very first slide. Mm -hmm. So that the knowledge existed. Uh, it's it's very un uh, ambiguous and not very clear and have lots of possible meanings. And when you start verifying uh, to verify them using science, they all fail. They're not factual. They're inaccurate. They're incorrect. So they fail every single criteria. Thank you for that. Comms cause. Thank you for the super sticker. Good to see you in the chat. She's a patron member of mine. And she actually sent me the clip of you, your friend on the scientific miracles that I was sending you yesterday. And I was like, this is an interesting ha video. Hassan is brilliant. He's Egyptian English as well. He's I've known him for almost 20 years now. He's absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for the video recommendation. I hope you're enjoying the video today. Stop scamming, man. Quran 5149 and all things we have created by pairs. Great point. There totally aren't creatures that reproduce asexually. Yeah, not, not, uh, not. There are lots of organisms. They don't have uh, right. a female. And they're, yeah, that's it. So that's, again, an incorrect claim. <laughs> yeah, all things we have created by pairs. So, yeah, can you imagine at that time they didn't know that things reproduced without having to have a binary ish uh sex for it to be the case no it's really Sp interesting. we spent so long in our evolution with asexual reproduction before we turn into sexual reproduction so it's like it's it's incredible yeah thank you so much stop scamming man most of all these claims can be traced back to a shill named maurice bacali i think Bacali. that's that's the that's the guy you're referring to. That's the Arab. But and he's okay. a Catholic physician who worked for the Saudi royal family and never even bothered pretending to convert. Yeah, not none of the scientists who were working in Saudi Arabia. Some of them actually said, uh, I think there was one Japanese guy who said that the when you pray in front uh, the Islamic prayer in front of water, the water molecule starts to to dance and do crazy crazy stuff. Wow. Um, uh, but none of the, and he said, this can never be uh, from any any source other than God. So all these claims, and not, not a single one converted to Islam. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, you would think the people who saw this and were like, whoa, this is evidence, would be like, I'm convinced. Yeah. I'm a Muslim now, you know, like this, this, or I'm convinced the Quran is true or whatever. So yeah, they're, they're probably say, I'll take my 2 million bucks and I'll stay an atheist. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm kind of wondering too, though, if somewhere, cause I've heard when I re read the article, some were already Christians. A lot of this stuff, like I said, overlaps the idea that the heavens were stretched out. God stretched out the heavens, like, uh, like a sheet or like a scroll. That's pretty vague. What are you trying to what are you trying to say like this is evidence that it's actually an expanding universe and he understood the cosmology that we're going to find out thousands of years down the road well if you're already a christian and you're a scientist in that respect you already believe that just because the quran validates that you're just saying amen to something that maybe the quran picked up from the bible or like it's already well known or understood in the day so yeah i mean that might be another trick. I mean, I don't just know. to give you an idea, so, uh, scientists would spend so long trying to perfect their equation because their half an inch or an inch long equation must precisely uh, describe the exact physical and, and natural phenomena. And the author of the universe, the author of the universe, is giving you a, like half a page of beautiful poetic language and doesn't hit the nail at all at any time. And, and, a, and a mere human comes and puts an equation so precise uh, that it, it explains a, a phenomena like, you know, like whatever physical phenomena you want to explain. And, and God if, miserably fails the test to try to describe it in uh, articulate or pre precise way. So now is where the fun comes in, if I may. Um, I would love to have our friends who are Muslims 
who agree with this or disagree with. I, I hope we get a caller who goes, Derek, I believe in the Quran. I believe in these things. I have faith. I believe that Muhammad is the prophet. But I disagree with the scientific approach people are trying to take. I also hope callers will reach out that do believe it and can challenge you or try to at least defend their view and why, you know? So are we ready for callers? Cool. All right, everybody stay tuned. I always enjoy these. Um, some of the nicest people. I mean that like yeah. I am so impressed with the behavior of most people who've called in in the past. And in fact, many of the ex Muslims who get a lot of hate out there in the YouTube world, um, they're like extremely impressed with how people come on and are like, wow, they're like very nice. And they treated me very kindly. I think that's the best behavior someone can have to, you know, convince people of things. So, all right, let me put, uh, Muslims, please. Or only Muslims, please. Just because someone's going to want to call in that's not. Uh, I mean, Derek, this is a serious business. I mean, this is what, you know, this is people's sort of soul and, and, and brains. They put a lot of effort in their face and and you don't want to come and, and sort of make a joke or, or, or make a cartoonish image of, the, of something so important to them. So I'm very, very mindful of being very respectful yeah. and very factual when I, there's no other way, really. Um, I won't take this as a joke. No, no, I know you don't. I know you don't. And I know you're very kind, but you also, you know, you're good, man. You're good. All right. Let me see here. Let me pin this. Uh, I, By the way, I already pinned his YouTube channel to subscribe to it. But I'm going to replace the pin message now with calling in. So let me get these super chats while we are waiting for a few few callers. And I'm going to remove the slides that we had up. Move from studio. You want to um, remove your slides from being shared? Sure. I'll get these super chats here real quick. Stop scamming, man, in the hizzy. S appreciate the uh, super chat, my friend. Most scientists with clips seemingly endorsing the science claims were, quote, mined. On the YouTube channel, this is the truth uncut. Some are interviewed on it. I need to check that out. I'd like to contact some of these, you know, scientists myself because you know more uh, about that. Um, in the Hassan Radwan uh, uh, video, he actually has um, he has a link to somebody's channel who's already had interviews uh, with those scientists. Wow. Yeah. So if you look back into uh, that particular thing you sent me, it will have a link in the description and it will say, this is a description of uh, a friend of his who has a, a YouTube channel who interviewed most of these um, scientists after uh, the event. I so that, that's significant. So this is, I'm literally posting the YouTube in the link or in the chat for anybody who wants to actually go to it and check out some of the videos from the scientists that are interviewed on this topic that are going to tell you what happened and explain how they really didn't draw the conclusions. Thank you so much. Stop scamming man for that. I just subscribed. So I will be checking that out at some point. Mr. Morpheus is back. Appreciate the super chat. I think he's saying careful. See what happened to Rashad Khalifa trying to prove Quran miracles. I, I am know. not familiar with who, uh, who Rashad Khalifa is, but they're, um, yeah, maybe if Morpheus can tell us a bit more, I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I don't. Morpheus, man, message me, please. Um, if there's a video or something or any like article, I'm interested. I want to look at it. I want to look at it. It's Thank very you. trendy. It's very trendy. It's very trendy because it's Vogue. It's it's in, in fashion. It's science. Everybody likes right. science at the moment. So when you have science, you, you, you want people to, you know, you want your faith to be reconciled with science. Right, right, right. Who doesn't? Nobody likes to think their cosmology is outdated. Uh, but I know some Christians who actually are, I guess you'd say, more progressive. They accept modern science. They recognize that the Bible is loaded with ancient cosmology. They just, it's not about that to them. So uh, one more super chat, and then I'm going to take a caller. And then, of course, I'll take super chats between callers and stuff. Holy Humanist, again, go subscribe to our channel. Have to tear myself away from this for bi for business law. We'll finish it tonight. Hanny, can we get a shout out for Gog and Magog who are yet to be found? Uh, this is stuff. This is this is a kind of Lord of the Rings territory stuff. <laughs> Game of Thrones, you know, where there's a wall. Um, uh, 
you know, built to, to, to stop certain people from invading the earth. This is crazy stuff. Like, I mean, I, I, I mean, I hope that this is sort of understood in, in a metaphorical way because the the physical image of this it, it, it's it's um, all, 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 almost almost Game of Thrones territory. This is crazy. It's entertaining. Um, be a lovely movie, but uh, I, I, I hope that most of the religious people don't take these things literally because they are insane. Thank you, Holy Humanist. I will be showing up at your next live stream to show you love as well. I really do appreciate you. Seriously, go subscribe to her channel. All right, let's take our first caller. And all I ask is that people are respectful. Um, if for whatever reason it, it gets a little too long, I might cut us short so that we can move on to a different caller because we already have more than one in the queue. All right, we're we'll start with AJ. Welcome to Myth Vision, AJ. Thank you very much sir, for taking me in. I have been watching your shows for a long time. Actually, I learned a lot. This Thank show, but uh, this show particularly, uh, which I have been following uh, science in Quran topic from quite long time. They claim each and every new scientific discovery that it was already there in the Quran. But what is the response from the scientific community? And also, if all the sciences that, that we are going to ever discover is already present in Quran, why no scientist is taking up Quran and doing research, at least in Islamic countries, leave about other countries? All right. So did you get his, I'm going to mute you because I got a lot of wind coming in, AJ, and then we'll have a response. So did you get any of the questions that he was bringing up? You're muted. My prediction, AJ is not a Muslim, um, uh, and he's obviously challenging. You say, well, why, why are they getting away with it? Why aren't Muslim countries who think that science should be the way to lead into the future are not challenging the unscientific claims by the Quran? Uh, and uh, my answer is very simple. Most of the Islamic countries are unfortunately uh, not, uh, don't have a very high regard for science. Uh, the education system is, is quite uh, poor. Um, like things like evolution is not taught properly in the Arabic uh, schools. As some are actually completely forbidden and they're not taught. And some uh, are teaching them, but they would actually say at the end of the class, uh, well, that's what the West believe, but we have our own theories. <laughs> wow. uh, it's almost like a competing theory, or, or they put a competing theory, like the ID, intelligent design, or something like that. Or like, what uh, was the major, the main, the huge apologist guy? I remember seeing a clip where he's like, they call it a theory for a reason. And I'm thinking to myself, like he was trying to say theory Z means Z it's like, Zach Zach yes, Zach yeah, but he's yeah. a doctor. Like, <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, what the heck but then again in a different country i don't know they, they might just be very behind in terms of the scientific method and i don't know they're, they're very but but some are deliberately like some would actually know deliberately you you must know being a a doctor i mean that is that is a common knowledge he would right. know that as a doctor the difference between a scientific and i um, and a, a scientific theory and a scientific hypothesis he would he must know the difference Okay, to give that answer, he's absolutely uh, using the crowd's ignorance against them. I'm, I'm afraid there's no two ways about it. Well, thank you so much for the call, AJ. I really appreciate that. I'm going to take our next caller. Thank you for calling in. All right. Um, so we're going to move to our next one. I just shout out to Holy Humanist. She says, haha, Derek. Uh, don't make me ban you, mister. No, but honestly, I appreciate you. Seriously, I appreciate you as well. I mean that. Like, we got to do another uh, show where I have you back on again to talk about more. There's just so much I'm sure you have to say. So, really, really, I hope you do come back on Myth Vision. All right. S. Abu, welcome to Myth Vision. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Thank you for calling in, my friend. Great. Um, so, I don't know uh, where to start. Uh, many uh, many mistakes that Selim uh, said about uh, the so-called mistakes, uh, scientific mistakes in the Quran. Okay. I, I guess he knows Arabic. Okay. So, uh, uh, for instance, uh, regarding cosmology, uh, 
Le Moission is also a correct uh, recitation. I don't know if he knows about skeletal or an. Uh, the well, you can add on it uh, a fatha, which uh, makes the the word Moission a correct recitation of the of the of the word. Okay, so and we expanded it. We expanded it. Sorry, is a, a uh, correct narration or recitation of the, of, the, of the word okay uh, einstein was wrong about uh, the expansion of the, un the universe he fought against it for him the universe was static and eternal uh, and it was his biggest uh, regret and mistake of his life not going with uh, the evidence that Hubble uh, discovered which the the universe was expanding okay <clears throat> okay, so, so let's let let's let Hanny and you both have a conversation. I appreciate you coming off with a good tone too. So, yeah, uh, no be, being critical of Hanny, you know, but at the same time, I, I like the respect. So, is there anything you'd like to respond back with that so far, Hanny? So the um, um, adding cer certain different connotations for, for for the word to change its meaning. Uh, where all the uh, interpreters of the Quran at the time of the Prophet and uh, uh, shortly after uh, all the most famous ones have all agreed that that word means somebody of a great might or great ability and has nothing to do with expansion whatsoever can you show me any tafsir or any interpretation uh, that uh, goes back to the era the older era that shows that the that word means expansion no, because I don't, I don't know by heart the the hundreds of uh, tefas here, which was which were made uh, in, okay. in that time. But the Quran is also made. The, the Quran is a universal message, so its message is not to be discovered right, right away in the time in the sixth century. Uh, things that would be discovered later, as a proof for later people, later sightings, later later uh, uh, men and women who would read it late. Uh, for instance, in our our time i we can discuss it but there's also uh, for instance rawasiya rawasiya in the verse of the uh, regarding the mountains rawasiya yeah. doesn't mean doesn't mean pillars that doesn't mean pillars i've, uh, I've pillars. never i've never claimed that there were pillars i, I said i my That's argument the translation, for, the translation yeah. that was underneath the, the verse rawasiya no. means stake yeah stake. no but but and but Mountains are not stake. No, so no, I wasn't arguing the roots of the mountains. I was arguing the the, 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 the explanation that says mountains are to st stabilize the earth crust so earthquakes won't happen. No, the verse doesn't say that. And to me, that become doesn't, doesn't mean uh, that the, the earth won't, won't, will not shake. And to me, that become. That does not mean it won't that shake. That actually, what it, that's, that's what it means. So what, what does it mean then for, for you? And to me, is to to be ripped apart and so, slide okay. apart. Okay, now now let's stay with that uh, understanding. Do mountains do that? Yeah, mountains are. Uh, if you take a, a um, how to a, a side view, if you make a cut, a gig hair particle, gigantic cut on a mountain, you will see that it has it. It looks like a, a big nail, a big uh, stake, which goes. Uh, far uh, deeper than its own height. In no, no, we are, well, I understand that. I understand about the roots of the mountains, but what I'm trying to say, I'm asking you a question. You said uh, it's not the shaking of the earth, it's stopping yeah. the earth from being ripped apart. So are you saying that if there are no mountains, the earth would have been ripped apart? In some points, yeah, definitely, definitively, because the weight of the mountains play a role certainly i'm on sorry the, that's in, in that's, the stability of the of the crust that's Definitely. not very that's not scientific the, the mountains are a byproduct of the result of the tectonic plates moving because what you're trying to say is you're yeah trying i agree to say, with that i know that but yeah, the weight but, but, also the weight of the mountain the, the mountains are by i are by products but also by the their own weight they they play a role in the stability of the that, that that is scientific that i can tell you that 100 percent sure that's scientifically incorrect but it actually poses a more dangerous um, problem it basically proposes that god wants ultimately to stabilize the earth so he creates an earth 
that is not very stable and then creates mountain in order to stabilize it. Why couldn't God create a stable earth to start with? God created the earth as uh, you, you know that uh, the earth is a giant ball of uh, liquid magma. See, so you have to have a solid crust which uh, keeps it uh, in, in its form. You see, so that, yes, but why do you need mountains? Uh, I'm, I'm arguing why do you need mountains? If mountains are only there to stabilize the, the earth, why, cre why not create a stable earth to begin with? Why, uh, if you can remove the mountains and then you will see what happens. <laughs> But I know, and I know. But yeah, what I'm trying to say, you're tr you're saying that God is not then Almighty, because God, the only way, the only way to have a stable Earth is to have uh, mountains. No, it's the only way we know, because we live on an Earth which has mountains, uh, and it's stable uh, that way. So uh, we don't know any other. Uh, but I, I can yes. tell you, I, and please check this knowledge here. Uh, mountains have nothing to do with the stability of the Earth. They are byproducts. They are uh, the reason why the te tectonic plates keep colliding and they keep clashing. And as they meet, they lift up the, uh, the ground, creating mountains. They have they are nothing to do with the stability. They are the, the reason. They are byproduct. They are consequence to the colliding of the tectonic plates. Yeah, that's uh... so we disagree. And uh, yeah, we'll but disagree. my question is, as Abu, if I may, um, yeah. are you in line with the whole scientific miracle uh, claims? Because I know some Muslims that don't. They're like, no, this stuff is not like they don't accept this whole argument that they're trying to prove the Quran based on scientific evidence to say, yeah. oh, this is a miracle. Do you agree with the scientific stuff? I, I disagree with that because it's it's dangerous. OK, because science evolves. And if, for instance, if in a time we, uh, some Muslims claim to be that some verse coincides with a uh, new dis scientific discovery, and they, then later that discovery is proven to be wrong, then they'll be like, uh, they, they'll be themselves wrong. And they proved right. the verse wrong, you see? So that's why that's I-, I very disagree. sensible, very sensible. I like that approach because yeah. I don't mind at all somebody who is faithful they belong to a religion they have a belief and makes them feel good and they're scientifically sound they are going to contribute a lot to the world um uh, there are a lot of scientists who work together like i think there was a couple of uh, a muslim and a uh, stephen weinberg abdus salam and stephen weinberg have actually came up with a, a an excellent paper and uh, the the faith of each of uh, the scientists have not stopped them from reaching uh, scientific uh, discoveries. So I would rather have somebody who's faithful, and at the same time, at the same time, can separate faith from science. And when they do science, they do science properly. That's brilliant. If you have that stance, then uh, I applaud you. The Quran is not a scientific book. There are the, here and there some mentions about some scientific facts in the Quran, and that, that that's the point of the video, I guess. But the, the Quran is a a book about a way of life you see uh, and a more ethical but, book but you see you can't have you can't have your cake and eat it too you can't <laughs> say that and then smuggle <laughs> just before you leave that it yeah, has that's why that. it's dangerous <laughs> not Very to take sneaky. everything science take as as a given for instance i i disagree about your inter the current interpretation of uh, the the function of mountains Maybe in ten years it will it will change. Now you believe that uh, the mountains are by, are byproducts of uh, cross colliding, B but maybe in twenty, thirty, four years scientists will discover uh, something else, and then your uh, theory would be obsolete. So, so the, the the correct stance then for any reasonable person for the lack of knowledge is we don't know. Uh, but the problem is those who don't know, they say, well, I've got a belief and I'm waiting for my belief to be vindicated and to be realized. I wanted uh, to well, match my book or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, this is a different um, approach. It's more of an honest one by saying, look, something might change. And when it does, we need to change with it. But if we have a book written in the 700s, let's say, or 600s, okay, 630s, um, and we're saying this is the capital T truth, everything must line up with this. Um, and so when we find modern, let's say embryology, right? The claim that 
that say uh, there's a scientific claim, say some Muslims want to say this is a scientific claim on embryology and um, they're dying on that hill. And we find out things that prove that that's not the case based on their interpretation of it. What are they going to do? Are they going to finally go, OK, hold on. I'm still going to believe in the Quran, but I'm going to stop acting like it's a science book. And these are just people. What if look, here's my if I were to pretend that I was a Muslim, this is my opinion. I would say that God spoke in the language of the time for the people of the time. He had no interest in explaining 1400 years into the future science to people in the 630s. So if any of this information was inaccurate based on what we know now, it doesn't matter because the book that he gave to the people at the time, here was the message. And he's not giving them a science book. Nobody's arguing it's a science book. This is a faithful book. This is a, how to live your life righteously to God. That's the kind of message, and it's poetic. So if I were Muslim, I would stop pretending this is a science book that's going to prove science, just like young earth creationists and Bible-believing Christians want to argue and die on the hill. The earth is 7,000 years old, or we didn't evolve. They want the Bible to be a science book because the Bible does make cosmological claims. It does hint at things that modern science is saying, that's not true. That's not true. So they want to bend things to keep their Bible true. But maybe God is speaking to them in the time where they only understood things yeah, the way but, the world was understood at the time. You see? But as, as I said, the Quran is also made for all the people of all the time. So even for us today. So let me let me ask you this. There's a super chat here. I just got to and I'm asking you a super chat because this is actually relevant. Um, Mr. Morpheus says, Surah 144, we sent not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people in order to make things clear to them. It's not a universal message. Stop it. What do you say to that? Inna arsalnaka rahmatan lil alamin wa arsalnaka lil nasi kafa. For all mankind, there are all the verses that said the, the, the messenger was sent for, uh, for the whole mankind. Why right. all the prophets, like Jesus, like Moses, they are local prophets who, who were sent to their own people, like Jesus for Israel, mm -hmm. Moses also for Israel, see, and all the many, uh, in, the Quran, in, the, not the Quran, in the hadith, we have 110,000 messengers and prophets, which were sent all throughout the world, in Australia, in Asia, we don't know about, okay? And uh, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad was sent as the last messenger for all mankind. And that's, that's an interesting question because Arabic, Arabic is a uh, fixed, fixed language. There is no other language on the earth right now as old as Arabic or even close. As old? Yes. Wow. And this is a claim I can This is exactly it. what the Jews say when I'm talking to them on Facebook it's, about Hebrew, yeah. and it's not yeah. true. It's not true. Um, yeah, this is it, it. Look, I'm just saying, as a friend, I'm being nice by telling you, you're not the only one who's saying this. The Jewish friends I have on Facebook argue that Hebrew is the oldest language, and it is true, and it's fixed, and, it, and like yeah, I'm but, just being but honest. You can prove that Judaism, uh, he, uh, the Hebrew language was dead, and then. So, sorry to interrupt there. Just by a very quick Googling, it took me two seconds. Uh, yeah. The oldest living language that's still spoken to date is Tamil in India and Sri Lanka. And uh, it is 5,000 years old. You're saying uh, Arabic is older than that? Yeah. And it's the same Arabic that was spoken in the Quran? Yes. So Salim, if you can read Arabic, if you read the Quran, you are reading the Quran which was revealed. For no, I know that, that's fourteen hundred. I'm talking about a, a language that's five thousand years old. Yeah, but Tamil. Uh, Tamil, just, Tamil, Tamil. I, I don't know uh, what people, uh, what the, the history of those people. Uh, but, Sri Lanka, you know the Tamil Tigers, uh, Sri Lanka. Can you, and yeah, India. yeah. Can you yeah. read Shakespeare as uh, Shakespeare was was written? Can you read? Moliere, as Moliere was, uh, was I, 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 can, I can read Shakespeare. I can read Shakespeare in English. That's that's yeah. all right. If you no. learn it, you can you can understand it. No, not? today's today's English, not Shakespeare's uh, days. You see what the, I mean? The, so Abu, if I may, and I'm I'm just reading your name on the on the thing. So forgive me if I'm not getting your name right. Um, okay. From what I understand, there are multiple 
readings of the Quran. And when I talk to Marayim Van Putin, other linguistic experts, they talk about how in the Koresh, if you will, tribe, this the Quran is written in a particular tribal dialect, that it's not like, like there's multiple dialects when it comes to the the to the uh, arabic language that is in the quran and how it's being read in various qurans that are being spread so it's not like a single universal uh, one-stop shop there are various ways of reading this language and it's not that simple what and, and i want to I wanna yeah. say something as well a, a language that doesn't move with time it's a bug and not a feature it's a horrible horrible curse and that's why arabic does not cope with the sign. If I'm having a scientific episode in Arabic uh, on my channel, I, I struggle. I struggle. And I have to speak a lot of words in English because I cannot find an Arabic word for it. A language. It's, no, I it's, disagree with that because uh, today we live in, in a time when the English language is the international. Okay, language. okay, okay. I, I, here is a challenge for you. What is the Arabic word for velocity? Surah. No, that's wrong. Velocity doesn't mean speed. Because velocity in physics has two things. It has speed and direction. Give me one Arabic word that gives you speed and direction. Surat tijahiya. I can that's, two, that, that's two words. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Directional velocity is also correct in English. No, no, no. There's no such velocity itself. It's one word that has the two meanings. So, so and that's, can you make a modern Arabic word that would potentially? Yes, uh, and that would be perfect. And that's how languages evolve. Right, right. That's how you keep a language alive. A, lang a language that sits in stones is being sort of being praised as a wonderful thing. It's a horrible thing. Language languages are made. It's man-made thing. It's a tool for you to express your ideas and and thoughts. And if your thoughts and ideas keep evolving, and your language is not a match, it dies. That's why you have a living languages and dead languages that's exactly what happens that's funny regarding velocity arabs don't need that word you know what because they don't make they don't make airplanes and they don't make uh, rockets so they don't need velocity see so oh, that's that's uh, that's a brilliant thing so we're we're lagging behind in size and, okay uh, let, let's do donkeys then <laughs> 30, 30 million words in arabic uh, in the arabic language that's, that's 30 million uh, words and it has it has to be fixated the, the language has to be fixed in time because you, uh, otherwise you will lose the meaning of the of the of the message the original message and See, that's the, i think it is based i think it is because of the religion that this is so important that that we're sticking to it and, and look it's not this is not unique uh the same issue is in uh orthodox judaism pertaining to the torah that they need the hebrew language they need to know what this said and they want to argue that the masoretic is the most authentic and it's still the words of moses etc um so this is why i i love diving into the septuagint and finding alternative linguistic approaches that we find in the Dead Sea Scrolls when it comes to the Hebrew Bible, et cetera. So I think we, we hit a stalemate on this particular issue because it seems that you would rather people not build rockets, become scientifically literate. And no, no, no. <laughs> what I said is that... If, if they're not able to build, speak it in their own but, language... But if we built if we built rockets, Arabs would uh, perfectly accept the word velocity and, and turn it Arabic like... And, and it will become velocity or velocity, for instance. Oh, so they can add yeah. words to the language. But but the, the funny like thing is, algebra is an Arabic word, which which the word uh, has so, come from Arabic. No problem. In, in, in Egyptian, the word the, the word television, for example, we say television, which is like the almost the French for television. We say yeah. telephone. We say we we use we use Latin based words to complement our language that is not complete anymore. We don't have words for these things. Uh, but that's, but, the, uh, but, nobody, but nobody says hat of mate. I mean, come on, I mean, we all say telephone. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's strange. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. There's also a cultural, cultural invasion if you wish for that so that we have to to use the, those words look but, mate uh, as, as long as we don't we understand each other then mission achieved i i guess you know that, that's what language is for really <laughs> yeah uh, Thank i you, have a Abu. question did for... you have another one actually i prepared your video derek 
for today. I, I, I so I thought that would be with the opposite prophet, and I, I missed uh, the last oh, interview no. with him. And I discovered uh, Selim today, so uh, nice, nice to meet him. He's a nice guy too. Uh, yeah. So I prepared like twenty-one scientific uh, facts in the Quran. I don't know if he will tackle them, but I, I have them just here. If he, uh, I can if ask he, him if he. If you want to, because I'm friends with Hanny and we can do follow-up episodes. If you want to email them to me, that way I can give him, like I can actually forward them to him, and then we could do another follow-up episode, and you can call back. Even we can, we can you know, have a little challenge conversation and see how because, go. because we're going to be doing 13 all together. We've done six today. We're going to do seven some other day. Yeah. Maybe the 13 will cross over with some of the 21 anyway. So hopefully they will. Yeah. Our goal with the episode today, and, and I try to make this my goal isn't to just do videos on presenting. I like to have these calls and I, I really appreciate the manners that you've had coming on to the episode and like being a kind person and stuff and having these conversations. I really enjoy. So I want to thank you for that. And Derek, uh, please, if you have just two or three minutes, I would like to answer your question in the beginning. You, you, you showed a, a video about yourself. Yes. Asking a question about Jesus. I don't, it's not the subject, but just quickly, please. Yeah, you, go ahead. You used in the in the video a verse from the Bible, from mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians, I think, which yeah. is a verse from Paul. Okay, right. Which is, uh, I think, it's it's not it's it's forgery uh, anyway. So right. let's say it's from Paul, and then you 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 ask a question to all Muslims, but this is a a biblical uh, verse, not a not a verse from. Can from I tell you Bible. why I use that? Why I said that? Um, I've seen multiple, more than one Muslim imam actually behind like a pulpit uh type thing and he was quoting this passage so this isn't that's why i said in the video not all muslims uh i clarify not all muslims think this way but the muslims i've watched actually are using that as evidence to show what they're trying to say and not all muslims even interpret the surah passage that talks about was jesus crucified or not i know that i've already had multiple muslims come to me and go i don't think that so i get it not everybody thinks this interpretation is the correct way of looking at it the person that made me want to do this initially was paul williams paul williams does think the quran is saying that jesus wasn't really crucified and that it god made it appear to his enemies that he was but he really wasn't and so That's what exactly i'm what saying the Quran says, yeah so what i'm saying i don't care if he if god meant this for only five people my point in this is if god meant to trick the evil ones and there's let's say let's say it's only five people he inevitably caused billions of people to be tricked by this supposed trick because billions of people believe he was crucified so billions of people are deceived because god played a trick on a handful of evil people this is my point in what i was trying to say initially the follow-up episode that you just saw at the beginning of this episode was me saying if he can trick that many people or cause that many people to be tricked how do you know you're not wrong and being tricked if there's a god out there that can do this to that many humans abu you and me are human. Hanny's human. We all are human. I like to think we all have an experience in this world we live in. If he can trick me right now, let's say I'm deceived and millions or billions of humans are deceived because God did whatever he did. What if the people that are your opponents, let's say Christians, right? They think you're deceived. They think the enemy is tricking you. And what if it was their God that they thought was trying to keep it from you? Yeah, like and Derek, and I, and I just want to add some context. If you would say that, the, 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 guys, this is a trick straight after, like a day or two, we, we, he waited 600 years to reveal that how now that that, that wasn't him, really, guys. 600 years. Well, that's years. the thing I said in the initial video, Hanny. It's not 600 years. There are Christian Gnostic texts that were found in Nagamati already saying what the Quran is trying to tell you, but the Quran gives you a little bit of a different spin. That I mean, everything does a little different spin. So, of course, a Muslim is going to say, no, 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 I didn't borrow from there. I didn't know this. But in these texts, it says that Jesus appeared like he was crucified. They thought they were killing the Christ. 
but really they weren't. It wasn't really him. It was a shadow or it was whatever, or it was Simon of Cyrene. One of the texts said it was someone else and it made it look like it was Jesus. And Jesus and one of them's laughing going, ha, 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 they think they're crucifying me. This is all hundreds of years before the Quran. So getting to the Quran and going, it knows the truth. Where are they getting this idea from? They will say from the angel Gabriel that revealed it to the prophet. I say, for me, because I don't believe that there's an angel secretly giving these messages, I am convinced that the, the puzzle that we're looking for is around in the world. And these ideas have been floating around, just like your presentation today, Hanny. All of these scientific claims, most ancient literature before the Quran has already made some of these statements. That's, that's a very interesting point here. I, I forgot to mm -hmm. mention. Uh, you, you, we we have to also get back to the context of let's uh, for, for regarding Jesus. Okay, mm -hmm. Jesus is an innocent man accused of blasphemy, uh, and a, a angry mob uh, called the authorities to kill him. Okay, so that that this this trick, called called trick, was used to save an innocent man from a hor horrible death on a cross. So. A, a, a trick can be beneficial and detrimental, if you can say that. So it was beneficial for Jesus because he was saved from, from an unjust death by God. But now this is coming from the Quran's perspective, you're trying to say, 600 yeah. years later, right? Okay. But from, from the other side, the guys will try to, to kill him. Mm -hmm. Of course, they, they, they think, oh, uh, uh, maybe we didn't kill him because in the Quran, there is a doubt. There is a uh, like a notion of doubt that they are not sure that they they actually killed him because they look at him, and it seems like him, but not exactly. But you see, Abu, if you happen to be born Christian, he must be crucified. That's part of the plan. Yeah. He had to be. So he had to be. He knew. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Paul. That's Paul, not gold. No, that's no, that's Paul. all the Gospels and Paul. So yes, I, I'm I, I'm tracking what you're saying, Abu. The entire New Testament teaches this idea that Jesus actually was crucified. He, it, th this idea is there. So the whole Christian message wasn't created just by Paul. I mean, there is other reason to believe there are other people believing Jesus died and was crucified. The, the, this is why Bart Ehrman, when he was interviewed by multiple people, me and, and even apostate prophet, who's like a big enemy in the he's an ex-Muslim that's like an enemy to Muslims. Um, you know, he points this out. The historical data points to that. What you find centuries later, and I'm not talking about six centuries, just a couple centuries later, you find these messages from docetists and others who are saying he wasn't really crucified. Paul believes he really was. So does the rest of the New Testament Gospels. And I would even say some of the anti-Pauline literature in the New Testament. James is not a Pauline book. Uh, Matthew is most likely not Pauline. It's anti-Pauline. These are Gospels that are written that act like Jesus was crucified. So you'd have to trust your Quran to be the one that's true and deny any previous literature that accounts for this unless you accept some of the Gnostic Nagamati stuff that I was mentioning that does say it looked like Jesus was crucified, but he really wasn't. And their reason for saying that is different than the Quran's reason. Their reason is because he's God or he's so divine that they couldn't crucify him. And of yeah. course, you would say, no, he's not God. He's just a prophet, which is closer, in my opinion, to the reality of a historical Jesus, if you take my yeah. approach. But yeah, the, 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 that's why that's why North Africa, Africa, Asia, all of these people who were before Islam were monophysic Christians. Monophysic Christians are like monotheistic Christians, which who equate Jesus with God. They refused the all the Chalcedonian uh, councils and so on. They refused to separate Jesus and having him like a lesser God. So they they uh, they put Jesus and equate him with God. All of these people converted to Islam uh, just in the 6th, 7th century because they they were monophysites. They were some kind of monotheistic people. Mm -hmm. And the message of Islam, which was pure monotheistic, right. and put Jesus back in his place as a human being, a prophet, all of these people converted very easily to, to, to Islam. See? Right. And you know, I have no quarrels with a kind of like a Ebionite, if there was, and there, I like to go to the scholars to find out, like, was there really an Ebionite type of Christianity, a Jamesian type of Christianity that was like Torah observant, 
but also, you know, respected Jesus and liked Jesus because a lot of the Jews didn't. But even in the Talmud, some Jews actually respected him. It depended on the rabbi. Um, I do have well, another one, call. One last thing. One last yeah, thing. One last thing, because we got we yeah. got one caller next, and I want to get some super chats out of the way. Getting back to the to the context of Arabia in sixth century, Arabia, the very first book ever written in Arabic is the Quran. Before that, there's no book, nothing. The Arabs don't read, don't write. They all, they all, they have their their culture. They don't read books. They don't have books. Okay. You mean, hold on. There are no writings at all. You're saying there's no inscriptions. Oh, there, are, there are writings. There are writings on on uh, on rocks, on uh, on mountains. Like so, you're stuff. saying no there books. is that, but there's no books. Is what no, you're no, no. I'm going to make I'm going to make a counterclaim. There is something called al muallaqat which is the the poetry, uh, pr the pre Islamic poetry. They used to be. Yeah, um, of course. Hung, hung, hung on Kaaba, and there used to be competitions in Okas, um, the market of Okas around uh, the Mecca. So, uh, so the, uh, there were writings, and there were reading, and there were people who loved poetry and literature uh, before the Quran. Yeah, like, but uh, no book, yeah. like philosophy, or history, or several of our people, just poetry. Uh, the Arabs. Uh, What's that have poetry. to do with anything, though? Even if, let's say, they didn't write a it science has to book. Do. It it has to, it have it has to do because the Arabs don't read and uh, it's not like today we have Google like if I search for something I type in Google in, back in this time and th on that time you just don't oh I heard uh, there are some Gnostic uh, people in Egypt that they say that Jesus is some kind of uh, of a supernatural uh, but, but it's, it's, yeah. so it's I, not a big there's it's not a big claim. It's desert. It's it's desert. desert. Yeah. What I think what Abu is trying to build up here, correct me if I'm wrong, Abu, you're trying to suggest because it was an oral culture mostly, I mean, 99, probably 0.9% is an oral culture, that Muhammad couldn't have figured some of this stuff out unless he read it. But even in the Quran, right, you, you, the, the our idea is that Angel Gabriel gave this information to him. But even in the Quran, I brought this up in one of my posts, it, there was a... The Muslim apologist, I, I can't remember his name, but it's something like that. I was pointing out that in the Quran, there are accusations that people are saying when we go to sleep at night or when we're in our house at the end of the day, he's being taught by people. So there are others who are teaching him. Now, I know that you wouldn't agree with that, but even the Quran says that yeah. this is is going or there are people who claim that that's what's going on. That makes more sense to me than he literally is getting divine revelation from an angel that's just me. But I do the because, same. I'm critical like this as I am with Christianity and Judaism. I'm not picking on yeah, Islam. I, I, okay? no, I do no, it to no, everyone. Sure. I'm very because fair. They, they, they were shocked by the amount of information suddenly ar arrived on him from nowhere. So, it is, oh, he, ha he has to have a, a team of uh, Jewish scholars hiding uh, behind, uh, underneath his bed, teaching him. Uh, but the Talmud was finished in the Baghdadi area with the, the Abbasid, the Talmud was finished in that time. They they were taken from the, the Islamic Sharia and added it to the to the Talmud. And the very first Arabic translation of the Talmud was in 2020, 2010. 2010. And it was so bad that they had they they put it to, to the junk and had to start it again. So here it is. The it's not like like today we have Google. We have all the information available. In that time, uh, Arabia is desert, as isolated from all the other cultures. Yeah, the that's Persian, that's. I would disagree Romans. right there. That right there is a red flag because every single Abu. After this, I gotta let you go because I do have a caller uh, and I do have yeah. to get these. But I want to say every single academic, even the Muslim scholars that I'm in communication with on Twitter, say no. There, there were Christians and Jews that were down in the culture in this in Arabia through the trade routes. They were settled down there. We have churches from the fourth, fifth century BC or AD. So like a century or two before this, contemporaneous to the time the Quran's on the scene, there are Christian churches. We have archaeological evidence of churches that were turned into mosques that were actually in these areas at this time. So there is so much evidence, my friend, that I would just keep looking. I, I have to give you very uh, – I want to thank you, honestly, though, for being such a kind caller. And I hope you please call back. This this was wonderful. Yeah, sure. No problem. Thank if you, I, Abu. I, I, I left my job uh, earlier to, to be here. So, <laughs> Well, thank you for that. I hope thank you don't get you. fired. Thank you. <laughs> You're very Thank kind, you. and I really appreciate you. So have a nice day, my friend.
Thank you, guys. I, I, I just want to point out, um, Derek, you're absolutely spot on. Mecca was like almost like Dubai of the of the ancient times. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know about comparing it to Dubai. I just know that that argument of it's not possible that this yeah. stuff could be here is just not going to work. It, there are very, very kind Muslim friends that are mine that are scholar friends. I plan on interviewing them when they, when they will give me the opportunity and come on uh, that actually say that's not the case. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, if they're willing to admit that, I don't see why that can't be part of it. Let me get through these super chats and then we'll take our next caller. Stop scamming, man. Thank you for the super chat. Rashad Khalida had novel ideas on the Quran. Some were thought, heretical and he was murdered in arizona in the 90s as you can see on youtube balil phillips the massive dawa ceo praised the murder that's sad i don't know anything about it oh you're muted hanny this is the guy the first person was referring to and we did not not know much information about rashad Khal khalida uh, or khalifa or i can't remember now uh, but that's uh, that's his story, his background story. I never knew about him. He was pushing scientific miracles in the Quran, and he got murdered for it, <laughs> but, or, or got murdered, full stop. It doesn't say if they were related. Wow. Some thought they were heretical. He's murdered. Wow. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Cam's Cass, I hope I'm saying it right. I could be m messing your name up. I apologize. Read Yasser Qadi's views on Yajud and Majud. Am I saying that right? Yajud and Majud? Uh, it's it's it depends on the dialect. So, in if you are from um, the area of North Africa uh, or the Syria Lebanon, it's Yajuj and Majuj, and if you're um, Egyptian like me, it's Yagug and Magug. Okay, he was very much in pain explaining why this is not a miracle. I actually like uh, some of his videos. To be honest with you, there's some videos he does. You could tell he's he's trying to be uh, faithful. To the tradition and yet at the same time he's trying to um be accurate and i i can appreciate a human who's trying to do that that isn't forcing everything that way so thank you again and mr morpheus if i didn't say thank you for this super chat thank you for that earlier um moving forward to the next super chat here and next we're going to be having on a caller just making sure i don't miss anybody here okay Aaron Johnson, thank you for the super chat. Muslims try to claim the grammar and linguistic Arabic in the Quran is a miracle. Maybe this can be debunked here or ideally with Dr. Marayan van Putin. How can it be a miracle? I mean, it just it, the, 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 the philosophy of language and languages are sort of developed to, for people to um, communicate and, and um, you know, understand each other. So how can it be a miracle? Uh, if they're saying the poetic, it's beautiful. There is a, there is a, a challenge has been issued in the Quran and that challenge comes in stages uh, mm -hmm. to people. If they can come up with a, with a, with a Quran like it, uh, uh, with uh, 10 surahs and then a surah or like a word, or it's just like gradual challenge. And uh, it's, a, it's the most, I've, I've done a full episode on it. It's the most ridiculous challenge you can ever come up with. It's like saying this is a Shakespeare a novel. Can you can you do better? I mean, it's, it's purely subjective. I think uh, some um, interview I did with uh, Shadi Nasser when I asked him, "Is it a miracle?" and he's like, "Well, that's subjective. Like, like, subjective. like you're trying to say something is better than others." you might like it. Was there other people who read it who didn't like it more? And is it a popularity vote? If most people like it, that proves it's what you're saying it is. Yeah. It's more of a subjective thing. And that's so all. There's the verse about when God torture people and he changes their skins. So the, the receptors and that's the next miracle that we're going to talk about next part. Okay. And because they, they're, they claim the, the pain receptors uh, are on the skin. Um, and uh, it's supposed to look very beautiful and poetic, but it says that he replaces the skin. So they every time they die out of hellish torture, uh, they can feel the pain again and die again and again and again forever. And this gets recited by a beautiful voice of somebody. And it's supposed to be very poetic. I don't care how beautiful the voice is. I don't care how um, uh, uh, poetic and... and, and uh, uh, they're using beautiful rhyming of, of, of the words. The, the, the context is absolutely abhorrent. It's right. disgusting. 
uh, the, there's no beauty for me in there. It's it's ugly. <laughs> Thank you for that, Sorry. Aaron. Mr. Morpheus said, please ask, where's the science in drinking camel urine in Hadith, Sahih B. Ukari? Do you know anything yeah. about it? Yeah, it's Hadith number 5686, uh, six, where uh, the Prophet of Islam has, uh, you know, uh, said, drinking the, cam uh, the, the milk and the urine of the camel can heal certain diseases. So it's authenticated Hadith in Muslim and Bukhari. And it's uh, it's one that can cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> what is dull. it actually trying to say? What what is it? The I mean, it, 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 it cures um, illnesses and uh, ailments. Oh, that's what that's the idea in the hadith that they're thinking yeah. that this. But so obviously, <laughs> it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have, have a, unless you like uh, a pint, uh, you know, <laughs> of urine, cavity <Kevin> urine. <laughs> Black <laughs> angels in the chat said. Wow, how did people possibly know that we feel pain on the skin? Shocker. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. All right, we're going to bring our next caller on. And uh, I really appreciate everybody on the super chats. Thank you. Perfect Dawa, welcome back to Myth Vision. How are you, my friend? You're muted. You're muted. Or something. I can't hear you. Chat, start praying. I think he's mute. <laughs> Um, do you want to back out, come right back in and see if it works? You're nobody's in line. Don't worry. You I'll make sure you come right back on. If you have to back out and come right back on, let's see what he has to bring today. Yeah, we can't hear you. You're, you're muted. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you hear us? Perfect. Down. You can, can hear, you hear me, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we can't hear you. Something's up, man. It's a miracle. <laughs> you're gonna want to back out i would leave and try and come back in and see yeah let's see what happens so thank god he's me <laughs> <laughs> there's a god after all well you know <laughs> all right let's see someone uh someone look let's see how he responds all right so perfect dawa your audio, man. Test your audio. Go to the, the down settings. to the bottom left. Something's up with your settings. Make sure you get that right. So we'll talk until you can interrupt us because we can't even hear anything you're saying at the moment. Hanny, what, what do you, you what do you think so far about the show, man? What do you, what do you, are you enjoying it? Oh, of course, and 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 it's, it's brilliant uh, uh, what you're doing, Derek. I mean, engaging people. It's not just yeah. academic and yes. Here we go. Here we go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. What was that, man? Were you not plugged in? Yes. Hi, Derek. Hi. Sorry. There was uh, the microphone was, yes. There was a problem with the microphone. Uh, okay, thank you for so having what, me. Yes. Yeah, what, uh, challenge are, what challenge are you bringing today? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I have little time, unfortunately, and I wish that um, <clears throat> it was another time and I could talk more. But uh, uh, as a converted Muslim, I would like to say that uh, I co all, um, mostly converted to Islam because of, uh, you know, uh, the rules uh, that is going to guide us to a better world, teaching me to be, be a better human being, you know, uh, loving other people, helping other people. So I hope all these discussions that, oh, this is not from God and so on is not making us to not follow those beautiful commands. Okay. So another thing is that um, uh, as a former atheist, I uh, uh, started to think, to realize that because I learned about pagans, uh, you know, religion that uh, in their religion, um, we uh, re get reincarnated and that reincarnation continues forever. And I had uh, learned from uh, science that uh, there is an end to this world. There are different theories. There, and the Big Bang, the start of the, the, the you know, the, the universe. So uh, I want so to what say- So you got to get to a point and challenge yeah, or yeah. something, my friend. All right. No, I'm just saying that, first of all, uh, uh, what is it? Um, here, the, uh, do you know, uh, Henny, that, uh, for, uh, no, I was going to say, first of all, uh, Quran is not a uh, science, uh, you know, book, but it's a, mm -hmm book of rules and morality okay how we are going to live on this planet but there are some scientific facts that 
uh, Allah gives in Quran so that say, uh, to tell us that, look, um, it, this is not just, you know, from a, a, a man. So uh, I would like to ask you that uh, how a man 1400 years ago knew that there was a beginning from uh, in this uh, for this universe. Chapter 21, verse 104 says, the day when we fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet for the records as we began the first creation so as we began the first creation is uh the you know the big bang so we shall do it uh, all over again a promise binding upon us indeed we will do it uh, do it so uh, this um, uh, verse tells us that the the universe is going to be uh, you know uh re recreated again and again and this is called in science uh, called um uh, pulsing theory or the big um i think uh, big big crunch also the big crunch okay. and the big bounce okay but yeah, yeah. do, do you do you know that these these are not scientific knowledge this is not this is not fixed it's it's a hypothesis no there are three uh, i know that there are three uh different well, there are more more than three yeah, no, there are three, uh, the big chill, the big rip, and the big crunch, okay? So uh, science believe that one of them is possible, and the one which uh, will uh, recreate the universe again and again is the big crunch, which is well, called also, also as... Uh, it's an infinite regress is possible as well, because time, when you get closer to the Big Bang itself, space, matter, and time, when you're getting closer, slows down so much that some scientists actually think it may never have actually a start. I don't know. Uh, there, so yeah, th this, this is the this is the area I was talking to Lawrence Krauss about and other physicists, and, uh, and and there are a lot of misunderstanding. We actually don't know if the Big Bang is the ultimate beginning. We know it was the beginning of our local universe. Whether it's the ultimate beginning, what happened? Though we 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 say we we don't know uh, what happened before because the word before doesn't mean anything because space time wasn't um, available then, but. Uh, now scientists understand that the Big Bang does not have to be the ultimate beginning. It might be just the local beginning of our local universe. And if the multiverse um, hypothesis is true, or the bubble universe, we could be talking about infinite. This could be infinite singularities that happen all the time in a bubble isolated universes. And we could be living in one of those uh, universes that are isolated from each other. So we okay. don't know. But the thing is that, uh, first of all, um, that uh, a, a man 1400 years ago in those uh, time that people, the, the highest knowledge was uh, read, uh, uh, reading and writing. That was the hi highest knowledge that he was talking about, you know, the universe. And there are many other verses. Unfortunately, I don't have the time now because I have to finish. Um, uh, but anyway, for me, that somebody talk about such a thing, such a, uh, about universe in many, many different Verses and they match with today's science. Okay, for me, it's uh, quite. Uh, but, but, but 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 it doesn't. That's the thing. It it does not. It does not. And it and it also it fills the other criteria of that knowledge was not unique. Every single creation myth either starts with the beginning of a universe. How from how, think about how difficult this is. I've actually posed this question to my brother years ago, and I said. He's like, man, there has to be a beginning and God had to create it and things like that. And I'm like, okay. And I was a believer at the time. So we were having a inside conversation. This wasn't a challenge. And I said, I said, bro, think about our lives. We're born, meaning we have a start. We live, we die. There's a beginning, a middle and an end to everything in our existence that we know has a start, middle, end, just simple conversation. And I said, can you comprehend eternal no, he, and you know our our minds were blown trying to think about it. We're like, whoa, that's that's very difficult to think about. How normal would it be to assume everything has a beginning since you have a beginning? That's not a hard leap. It doesn't take a miracle to make that assumption. And if science one day shows that we didn't, that would that would be the biggest pill to swallow. I would be shocked to find. All right, what ancient myths are we going to find that say? Uh, something is everlasting. Uh, there, there is no beginning to creation or something like, I don't know. Uh, there are, in, this gets into interpretation as well. Like, yeah. 
Derek, sorry, uh, <laughs> my wife needs the computer. That's why she's uh -oh. writing. Yeah, that, You're going to get in trouble. Go. Yes, that's why. <laughs> uh, I hope that uh, it was another time I would have more time and talk Call to back, you. But anyway, friend. yes, yes. Another thing is uh, I, I just would like to say on uh, Saturday uh, on uh, Modern Day Debate, I have a debate with uh, David Wood. If you would like, you can watch it. I appreciate okay. it very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Perfect Dollar. Thank, we'll have you, friend. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah, he's such a kind guy too. And I think he gets a lot of crap from people, uh, sometimes unnecessarily, but I get it. They're just kind of like, ah, he's, he's so nice. He's friendly. Like you almost don't want to even argue, you know, you're like, okay. Uh, no, yeah, no, I understand. But again, see that the, these are distortions of science. So that you, that you're, you take something that is, it's not even mainstream. We don't even know and saying, well, he talked about it, but every single creation myth has touched on either, a, a, a a cyclic universe. By the way, the closest religion to anything to do with cosmology, the closest religion is actually the Hinduism. Right. The the the, the Hindu book is actually got the a lot of closer the closest uh, to cosmology uh, as we know it. Uh, we got another does... caller. Sure. All right, my friend Naz is it Nazam. Per Welcome to Myth Vision. Correct me. How do I pronounce your name, my friend? Uh, Nazam. Uh -huh. Awesome. Welcome, my friend. How uh, did you have any challenge or questions or comments? I was on about the discussion on the fiction. I'm actually a good friend of uh, Paul Williams. I've known him for awesome. Yeah, he. I'm friends with him too, actually, on Twitter and Facebook. We talk from time to time in Messenger and. Uh, I, but yeah, but he won't interview with me. <laughs> I said I don't want you to get in trouble with your fans. So anyway. Well, maybe uh, one of these days you can maybe come on your podcast. And... You're breaking out, my friend. You're breaking out. Sorry. Um, I was just saying maybe I can encourage him to come on your podcast. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not like pressuring him. You know, uh, he's a friend of mine. I wouldn't want to. Maybe one day we'll find something that makes it worth it. So uh, did you have a challenge or a question or did you want to correct something? It's not so much a challenge. Um, I just wanted to just make a comment on the crucifixion verse. Okay. Uh, so my view is that um, people may have erroneously believed in the death and even resurrection of Jesus, uh, but that's not something that's being condemned in the Quran. Uh, but what's condemned is the rejection of Jesus, so the rejection of him being the messenger of God, the Messiah, despite that they, they crucify him. Is it so? Let me let me clarify here. Is it that they're making him God? Is that really the condemnation that they've made him divine? Well, from the context of the verse, it's with regards to the history of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. It's about them, for example, accusing the mother of Mary, um, you know, um, having a child out of wedlock. Um, and then it goes on to say, like, them saying, you know, that we crucified the, the Christ, the, the messenger of God. Um, so it's in that context, it's more to do with the rejection of Jesus as the messenger of God, right. as well as them asking for signs. So, Nazam, what, what do you say then about the, the Quranic verses that clearly says, Kafar al yani, uh, th th those who accepted Jesus as to be divine, they, they are considered to be infidels. They have they have they have disbelieved uh that's quite explicit obviously that's nothing to do with the crucifixion verse right the right. verses that talks about christians those who talk jesus to be a god are, are 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 disbelievers they are infidels yeah so the word infidel isn't used in the quran um the word infidel was actually um a christian term that was used to refer like during the crusades um they used infidels uh, to use that for for Muslims, uh, but the, the word that's used is um, as as you mentioned, kafara, uh, and, and the word there means to cover or to conceal or or hide the truth. And 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 may I add deliberately, deliberately. So it's somebody who knows the truth and they did deliberately conceal it. Yep, and despite the um, evidence presented to them, uh, and they're convinced, but despite that, they, they still choose to reject it. Uh, but as you also correctly mentioned, it's a different set of group of people that are being referred to. 
um, and, and they're being condemned not 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 because of their belief in the crucifixion of Jesus, but because of them worshiping Jesus instead of God alone. Let me ask you this, Nazam, if I may: Is the passage saying that God did make it? A, that there is this evidence here in this passage that God is making it look like Jesus was crucified. So, it, that, so it, I, say that again. Uh, that's an interpretation of the verse, but strictly speaking, um, the verse is in the passive tense, so it doesn't actually mention the doer of the action, and it could just simply be understood like through natural means that it just simply appeared to them that Jesus was dead or that he was crucified. It doesn't necessarily. But it says it says ex explicitly, and they have crucified him not. He was made to look like as if he was. So who made him look? Uh, God, God himself. Uh, it, so that's it was, where it, you would disagree, Nazam. You you don't think that God made it look that way? Of God in that particular verse. The, the, the only way or the only place where God appears in that verse is uh, when it says messenger of God. So they, they say we crucified Christ. Um, the messenger of God. So God is only mentioned in, in that part of the verse. But then it goes on to say they didn't kill him nor crucify him, but it appeared to them. So some interpret it, it was made to appear to them so, whereas other translations has it, it seems so to or it appeared yeah. to them. You see, the, the subjective is, is omitted in the Quranic verse. So you have the the, the objective, the, the, the object, which is the, the, wit the people who are witnessing the incident, and you've got the verb, and the subject is omitted, and but the only logical conclusion you would get is that subject must be God. Actually, that doesn't make sense grammatically, and this was actually pointed out by a classical Quranic commentator by the name of the Bakhtari, and he pointed out another commentator points the grammatical problem in saying that it was made to look like that Jesus was crucified it is uh, because he says if you look at the pronouns, um, all the pronouns refer back to to Christ so it's that Jesus wasn't crucified nor was he um, he wasn't killed nor was he crucified but it appeared or he appeared to them whereas on the view that God made someone else look like Jesus and that someone else was crucified uh, it, it doesn't make sense because it's not Jesus who's being made to look like someone else but it, in this view it's someone else that is being made to look like Christ so may I Nazam uh, this is a very fascinating point I'm totally cool with this in fact I don't care where the evidence goes is where I'm interested in heading so I appreciate you correcting this detail this actually lines up more with my initial video if I may show you I, I'd like to get your opinion on I've got quite uh are you hearing all that noise too uh, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting some feedback, all right? Yeah, I think for, I think Nazam, when you're not speaking, maybe if you can mute yourself. I don't know I if think that's that too hard, my friend. Okay. We'll fix, the, fix the problem. Awesome. Let me pop this video up. This is my initial video, and I want to show it because this was my point when I was looking this up. Look, I some people might think I'm the enemy. I get it. It's If, your faith, if, if it's your faith, you know, nobody likes to, like, have someone try to figure out what are the possible building blocks that made this evident? But this is what my initial video said, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then I'd love your thoughts. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Forgive me on that. Hold on. Here it is. Okay, so let me pop it up. Okay. Now I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think this is it. Okay, here it is. So playing it back. Not all Muslims think alike, just like not all Christians. Most Muslims believe Jesus was not actually crucified, but it looked or appeared as if he was crucified. My friend Paul Williams over at Blogging Theology does a lot of educational videos. That Jesus didn't really get crucified, but it appeared as if he was. Now, where did this idea come from? This is why I do what I do, looking for the fingerprints. In the late 2nd century to 3rd century, there were Gnostic texts that were coming up that were equating Jesus and Thomas. There were also texts that had Simon of Cyrene, the figure who helped Jesus carry the cross, that he was the real person who was crucified. Let me read you a quote. I was laughing at their ignorance when the crowd mistakenly crucified Simon of Cyrene and asserting that this deception was made possible because I, Jesus, was altering my shapes, changing from form to form. Are they getting this from Gnostic literature? The point is, does it require a 
revelatory figure named Gabriel in order to tell you this. I mean, what kind of trick is it that you made everyone think Jesus was crucified? An entire religion is made out of this idea, and 1.8 billion people on planet Earth believe it today. What kind of trick is God playing? So just a comment on this, okay? Maybe I am a bit polemical at the end when I say, what kind of trick is being played here? Uh, the reason why I brought that up is there are some Muslims that actually believe God causes these things to happen, and they will say that this might be God that's doing it. But the question I had for you, just a simple one, is if you're not a believer, like you pretend to be me for a moment, and you don't believe that this is true, like you literally believe the faith and the tradition— and you're looking for how they would come up with this idea that Jesus wasn't crucified, and you find literature, and it's not just one book, it's multiple pieces of literature before the Quran that's saying Jesus wasn't actually crucified. It looked, or even Jesus, in some of the texts, it says Jesus himself tricked them. So it wasn't even God necessarily, the Father, it was Jesus himself who tricked them to make it look like he was crucified. If I see all of that evidence, and then you get to the Quran in the seventh century, you could understand why someone like me would go, well, maybe they got this idea. Maybe someone had passed this oral tradition through the trade routes down there, and they heard this story somewhere. And they're definitely against Jesus being God. So they have a different way they're going to uh, convey this information. Do you at least agree, like, you at least see why I would come to a conclusion that maybe this is already something known? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually sympathetic to that view. Uh, and I'm actually open-minded. Um, I could see how... Thank you. <laughs> but I think where myself and, and you, Derek, uh, would differ is that I'm saying that this is a particular interpretation, and this interpretation may have been influenced by Gnostic Christians, and not strictly speaking what the Quran itself says, because the Quran could also be um, understood to mean that simply uh, Jesus swooned on the cross, that he just simply appeared to have uh, died to the... Like the swoon theory? Um, I, I, I don't know if I can mention his name, but um, you've had a professor in the past. Yeah, uh, mention whoever. Okay, Price, Robert Price. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Robert Price has in his books like Deconstructing the Son of Man, um, and also this book he wrote called the, um, the Da Vinci Code Decoded, where he argues like from the Gospels themselves, there could be like a subtext or underlying text where Jesus actually survives the crucifixion. Um, yeah, that's actually a serious theory by some that he actually, yeah. Is Do you think that's what's being conveyed here? I think that's one of the possible meanings um, amongst others uh, that could be understood. But whichever interpretation you take, um, it, this is um, something that doesn't make any difference to a person's afterlife, or it's not a salvific issue. Um, whether you believe Jesus was swooned on the cross, or even if you believe that Jesus died by crucifixion, it's not something that's salvific. But what is salvific is to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Um, and also, the chronic Jesus isn't a Gnostic Jesus. Um, so the, the Quranic Jesus is the prophet sent by God um, who comes in line of many other Israelite prophets that came before him and also to give, um, you know, glad tidings of another prophet or messenger to come after him. Whereas the Gnostic Jesus is someone who is like fully God but who is in right. or is divine or... Yeah, and this is why I had uh, Peter von Sievers on recently. Uh, I don't know if you watched that episode that we were talking about the origins of Islam, and he was trying to explain that the if you look carefully in the Quran, you'll see that the Quran is going against some of the contemporary uh, – what is it called when – they believe God died. Um, deicide. There are Christian doctrines that God died God. on the cross. I'm hearing bad static, bad noise. Is it bad, Annie? Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I. It was just coming in bad. But that that deicide, that God died, or the different types of Christianity, that it is a, it's responding to these other versions of Christianity in its time, um, which is. It makes me curious as someone who wants to historically try to understand these things. It makes me very curious as to what kind of what is the group, what is the people that are here, uh, the people of the Quran in the, its initial phase, 
because Jews, for example, didn't really care to engage with Jesus. So it makes you have to imagine these are a different kind of group. I, I say that because there's some people want to argue that maybe uh, these are it's a Jewish group or these are certain Christian type groups. I, I'm interested in knowing like what is the historical data that builds up to why the Quran is responding to these versions of Christianity. And um, yeah, it made me, made me think maybe there's a blend of ideas. Maybe the swoon theory combined with the idea that there are traditions out there that are being told orally, maybe that are saying he didn't really die. It looked like he died. Don't know. I, I, I don't know uh, what we can show because we don't have very good evidence right there in the 620s and 30s other than the Quran to kind of support the what's going on in the Quran. That's the problem. You know, we don't have too much historical data. And I, I don't know everything. So I, I just came on to speak about the crucifixion little that I know. So, I you know, I appreciate you coming on. I, I, I just want to say thank you for coming on and sharing that. I think it's tough for me because when I go to explain it, there's 18 other Muslims that disagree with you with a different take or whatever that goes with the, I guess that goes with the property, you know, that's just how the thing goes. But uh, yeah, so it it's and interesting this, to hear different ways. Yep. Yeah, uh, and obviously um, just because a few good men disagree with one another, it doesn't mean that we throw in the whole enterprise. But even, right. so even atheists disagree with one another. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. But thank you. Yeah, did you have anything for Hanny? I, I've been hogging all the time. <laughs> I, I, I've been listening to, I've been following your podcast for the past year. So I, I, I'm a, a follower, a fan. So, yeah. Thank and, you. Um, f um, found your interview with Dr. Siddiqui um, to be very interesting as well and beneficial. With who? Uh, Dr. Siddiqui on the Quran. Uh, Siddiqui. This was a couple, maybe two, three months ago. I'm oh oh Sidki, I'm so sorry. Uh Haitham Sidki. Yes, yes, yes. I, I don't know. I don't understand Sid, Siddiqui. Yeah, um, Dr. Haitham Sidki, smart. All of these people are smart. And I will be having uh, Muslim scholars, uh, some that I've been talking with as well to have them on. I'm not interested in fundamentalist. Uh I came out of that. I'm more interested in academic, scholarly, not apologetics. That's not my thing. So I try to stay clear of that. The only time I think apologetics are fun is when you're having conversations. Like if someone were to call in and challenge, right? That might be fun. But uh, as far as when I do an educational video, I'm not interested in that, you know. Just like yeah. uh, Paul's not. Paul Williams, he's not. Yeah. You know, he wants academic discussion just like I do. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe one of these days, um, maybe meet at Speaker's Corner. You have a... <laughs> Yeah, I definitely wouldn't mind. I know that uh, a lot of yelling goes on out there too, though. So it's like, ah, I'm not into all that, you know. But a mixture of different people, so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Did you have anything else you wanted to give to Honey or? or? No, um, just um, also my condolences to uh, you uh, regarding your friend as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. His family most of all, you know, in all of the situations. So, well, I thank you for your kindness. I really do. And I hope that we can have more conversations like this and show friendly, not like I win and you're wrong. Like that isn't my goal. I don't mm -hmm. want that to be my goal. Um, I personally don't believe I'm open. I'm very, I'm very transparent that that's where I'm at. But, um, I do appreciate people who do believe who are mature enough to have those conversations with me and respect my choice, just like I respect theirs and Hanny as well. So thank you very much, Nizam. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, you take care. Thank you, my Thanks friend. Let's much. talk again. Bye, man. This has been Hanny. You didn't tell me this was going to be such a, a, a wonderful, very civil, very civil so far. <laughs> I love it, man. Like this I is think, good. I, I, I'm hoping the world is coming to realization that we're we're talking about things that happened way in the past, and we can't really be sure. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you have a coffee and have a conversation? I, I'm I'm very impressed with the like just the the conversations we've had with people. 
I hope the audience is as well, even if you disagree and, you know, we, we kind of get into our little tribe and we go, ah, I think he's wrong and I don't believe it. And, or I do believe it. And Derek, you're wrong. And I, you know, I can't wait to show you why you're wrong or whatever. Cool. I get it. But if it's friendly, that's what I want. I want friendly disagreements and things like that. And like show why people are wrong. I'm not interested in attacking and all that kind of crap. And I hope more people head that direction. You know, I want more people to be able to have these conversations. Well, and I and I, I got to say something. Like when I first saw Nizam, and he does look like a sort of a, a typical Muslim, and this is the sort of guy that people will be standing in front of in, in a bus stop, and they they'd be a bit wary. Right. And he he speaks very very softly. He's very interested in other religions, and he's interested in the Jesus narrative. He uh, read Robert Price's books and everything, yeah. and suddenly you have this completely different person that doesn't almost match the stereotype of the yes. person. And, and, so, and so people, please do not judge people. And you might have a, a cleanly shaven guy who looks absolutely brilliant and he could have a terrorist with him. Uh, so <laughs> be, be careful. <laughs> Pre yeah, don't have prejudice. Try not to have your prejudice, you know, and that's a very good point you bring up, Hanny. Let's get these super chats, my friend. Osri Schizophrenia, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Derek, I want to say that I believe that mountain is a metaphor for something, for example, secrets or a place to conceal behind it. So that may be the case. I, I wrote them back and said, maybe I don't, I'm not familiar with the Quran's use in, of terms like mountain. Um, it might just mean mountain. It might have something else. Sometimes there are other words that describe things like feet. So, describe. so the, mount, the mountains are, 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 are referenced twice in, in, in two different contexts. One is for, for to, to anchor the earth so it would not shake. So it's, a, it's against uh, earthquakes. And the other one was to um, to, to, to stabilize the, the earth crust. And it's almost like the pigs and the stakes for a tent. Mm. Uh, to, to erect things above them, which is going to be referenced to the sky later on and the pillars. So, and, and both are scientifically inaccurate. That right. it just, uh, it's just plain straightforward. They're scientifically inaccurate. They're not, they don't do what they're supposed to be doing as per the Quran's claim or understanding of a claim, because these were understood. Remember, these were understood way later and uh, re-explained and rehashed to suit the current narratives. The ancient people understood them to be different things, and some people don't even see them as, as scientific um, uh, marks. They are just um, they're just a poetic uh, interpretation of God's um, beautiful creations and things like that. Yeah, I kind of wonder um, how because you know not all Muslims think the same way about things, and you being an ex-Muslim, you know this all too well. Uh, speaking to to people all the time in the world. Um, how many are willing to say, okay, this is ancient cosmology. It's what they understood at the time, but they're like past that. They don't care that this is not scientifically accurate. I wonder how many Muslims actually are willing to do that because I think the apologetics, like people who want to push apologetics to prove that they're having a major impact on the young, the, the younger crowds that come out, like what we see in Christian apologetics where they, or, you know, whatever they're trying to prove the Bible. I wonder. But the the problem is with Islam is slightly different. Uh, when you put Islam in the context of this is the f final uh, message of God to to the right. universe, and it's completely outdated like that. You you sort of you you kind of you're eager for an update, and that's why the Baha'i faith is an, an offshoot of Islam comes along to say, hey, hold on a second. Muhammad wasn't the last prophet. There are more prophets to come. Jo Joseph Smith right. could actually fit that narrative <laughs> as a, a, a recent prophet, the, the latter day saints, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And imagine if, if we're still around in a thousand years from now, what we might know, you know, what, what are we going to do? Still hold on to something from the first century? Mrs. and Mr. Christian or the, the sixth century to my They're going to see us as savages. They're going to see us as complete savages and completely awkward. Uh, what we are saying right now is going to be right now. obsolete science to them. And they say, I can't believe these guys used to slaughter animals and eat them and, and crazy stuff right. like that. Right. You know? I was because thinking they, about that. 
Oh, it's going to change. I also use the example of the way that we rehabilitate people by throwing them in jail. By then, I hope our psychology and our science and understanding the behavior of humans has developed to a point where we know how to rehabilitate people who might be criminals or active, uh, not going along with society. And we find a way rather than locking them up or cutting their hand off if they steal or killing them, whatever it might be in whatever society, we now know how to do things better. You see what but I'm trying to get at? But yeah, and imagine imagine scanning brains at the age of two or three years old to, to see if there is going to be a future uh, a person of, uh, who would cause problems because of chemical imbalances and, and stuff like that. And if you reset the electricity in the brain, you might end up with a person who can make better choices. But then that's another ethical territory you're going to head towards, and it's this is going to be very dicey. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be dicey. Thank you so much, Osri. Aaron Johnson, thoughts? The only miracle is 1.6 billion people believe in the Quran, or that the Quran is a miracle. Even Muslim scholars who know Arabic ignore grammatical error Quran. Yeah, you see, that, that's another issue, but this one I actually don't entertain very much. Those who would say there are actually some grammatical errors in the Quran. Uh, I don't care about these too much because there are cl counter claims that grammar started with the, with the writing of the Quran. Right. Quran is the reason why we have Arabic grammar to start with. I think it's futile because I, I think I don't care about what words are made of. I I care about what do they mean, and 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 the consequences of that meaning. Right. Are, pe are people going to lose their heads? Uh, because of an understanding of a word. I don't care about the ontology of the word. word words don't have ontology. Uh, uh, words have meanings assigned to them, and they change over time. The word gay in 1950 was uh, uttered in the sense of, uh, hello, have a gay day, and now has yeah. a completely different understanding, and words would change. So I don't care about that too much. I, I care about what do they mean and the consequences of uh, what they mean. I will say this, uh, Marayim Van Putin, uh, Professor Van Putin, I talked to him and he says one of the problems with trying to act like there are initial errors in the Quran about the language is that um, we don't know if that is an error or not. And sometimes a word is actually different in it means the same thing and it's different in a different context in the Quran. So. To say that is we don't have enough literature floating there is, around. There, there, isn't a, there isn't a point of reference. Exactly the point Quran, I was trying to say. Quran is the point of reference, unfortunately. So, yeah. yeah, and I saw it's a weak area of, of trying to critique the Quran. I, I would not touch that. But people do believe the Quran itself is a miracle. Like in the book, right. it's it's a it's they actually they believe it was written before the creation of man, of all men, of Muhammad and Jesus. So That's why we like, had the, the oldest language that the, that guy was saying. So. It's it's akin to the Logos idea. Okay. Makes sense I, where the idea would come from. So <laughs> something has already been passed down. Aaron Johnson, thank you so much. Can Salem uh, expound on the miracle claims of embryology and mountain pegs and please deal with the Arabic words, words for pegs or clinging clot? Okay, so we've, we've gone through this before in embryology, but the, the stages of the fetus, uh, as per the Quran, it is in no way match of the scientific um, understanding right now. Um, it's uh, uh, There are approximation, and as we said before, um, why is this supposed to be a miracle? People have lost babies, uh, and ab abortions used to happen, and uh, you would have been able to examine babies and in and, and different and fetuses in, in different stages and see how they look like empirically and they were actually written down and the, the uh, galen has uh, sort of written books about it that we're talking about clearly two or three centuries before islam and hundreds of of years even before galen uh, other people talked about it. it it was a common knowledge it wasn't too much of a of a problem but even that knowledge was incorrect as we said uh, the final stage is, in, is, is, is incorrect, where the bones are formed and then the flesh uh, comes to cover the bones. That is incorrect. That, that's not proper uh, science. So that's completely uh, debunked. In terms of the, um, 
the pegs uh, the these are the um the stakes which is the uh, the underneath of the mountains are bits that uh, that anchor it's almost like an iceberg and the tip of the iceberg and you get the bottom bits almost like the roots uh, of the mountains and they're supposed to be anchoring uh, the earth crust and again that is incorrect uh, mountains are a by byproduct of the tectonic uh, uh, plates moving and colliding and therefore when they collide they create uh, the rising bit and the bottom bit and they're not there for any reason they serve no purpose Thank you for that. I'd love to get some images maybe later on in a different episode to kind of show maybe some backing. Yeah, there. next Just, next time I'll prepare stuff with the actual images of the mountains and how they look like. And right, yeah, yeah. Mr. Morpheus, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Quran three seven says there are verses none knows its meaning except Allah, and those who are firmly rooted in knowledge say we believe in it. It is all from our Lord. They just believe. So they don't know the meaning of it. They just believe it. Or whatever. And, and, and that is exactly what faith is about. Isn't faith uh, sort of, uh, that's the definition of it. It's you believe in something without evidence. If there is evidence for it, it's no longer called faith. It's so called epistemology or something else. If you're going to provide evidence for a belief and it's justified true belief, then well done. You've just achieved epistemology because that's what knowledge is, um, is explained. It's justified true belief. I must take this right here, right? So you're going to hear conflict come back from that, that definition. I know this because the Christian apologists do this all the time. When you go to Hebrews 11, and this is like the chapter on faith, where you're going to hear a list of all these people that God promises things to, there's no evidence in the real world around them that this is going to happen. I mean, Sarah's 99 years old. She's told hmm. she's going to have a child. She laughs about it. The evidence is contrary to what is supposed to happen. That's faith. And when you see that definition played out, it's the apologist that want to redefine faith to be, oh, it's evidence-based. Uh, no, it's evidence-based now that you've watched 20 other stories about miracles that have happened. But technically, even then, looking and observing around you, there's no evidence to say these things will happen. Uh, and I'm not speaking for the Quran. I'm speaking specifically for uh, Christian apologetics, but it might relate to some degree. So they're having faith that God's going to keep his promises or a healing's going to come or whatever it might be. It is not based on we have actual evidence. The only evidence you know, that we have is the stories at this time. So. You know, there that betrays a psychological discomfort. It's innate in humans. We want evidence, even if we don't tell that to ourselves. I don't think pure faith does not exist. We all want to be sure one way or another. Uh, and we can actually deceive our brains would deceive us to see things that we we're not seeing just to to give ourselves that sort of extra piece of comfort yeah uh, we all want evidence well that um, gets condemned in the new testament over and over they ask for a sign only an adulterous uh generation asks for a sign and he condemns them only the sign of jonah will be given that's only in matthew but in mark he doesn't even give the sign of jonah and they're condemned but they're praised when they don't need evidence like in Gospel of John, when Thomas needs to see the Lord and feel him to know it's true, and it's just a yeah. story. Yeah. And they're convincing you, blessed are those who don't see, yet still believe. Like, that is the definition of faith, and that is evident in that way. Does the Quran have condemnation of people who require more evidence? Is I was going to say, that Abraham himself, Abraham, I mean, that's the, like the, the, the dudes. Uh, he was talking to God. He's talking to him. And he said, can, can you show me more evidence? And he said, why do you, I'm talking to you. Why do you need evidence? He goes, well, so my heart would be comforted by extra evidence. So he gives them that classic, I think it was either four or ten birds, I, I forget, uh, and uh, ripped them into pieces. And he said, well, you know, I'm going to bring them back to life. And, and he does that in front of them. So it's again, it, it's it's uh, it's questioning God's um, um, uh, uh, justice. Some people are given way more evidence. Paul, you know, uh, the road to Damascus, the, the person experience. And some people like you and I are begging for something <laughs> for it to appear. And there's absolutely nothing. It's like, no, 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 you got to believe for that evidence. But no, there, the, people were asking for evidence all the time, even the prophets themselves. Thank you for that. Mr. Morpheus, great, great super chat. Chris Harris, and then we're going to get our caller. Don't go anywhere, friendly Muslim. I'm coming. Chris Harris, a perfect God sent Jesus, not realizing he would confuse people into believing he was God. 
then had to send another prophet to clarify, not realizing the conflict that would create mistake or malice. I mean, this, this is, is the point I was trying to make in the one passage, our friend we had on, is it Nazam? I hope I'm saying it right. Hazam? I, I can't remember exactly how to pronounce his name, but uh, Nazam, Nazam. Yeah. That particular passage, he could be 100% correct on interpreting that. The problem is it's like, why did they run with this interpretation? Why did this end up becoming what Christianity became? And, you know, more people on earth, if you were to compare religions wise, like it's the number one most popular religion out there. People are leaving it uh, by the boatloads. But nonetheless, it's like so many people believe this. What the heck happened? Did God like completely let human affairs do its own thing? And then is that an excuse to say, well, we don't want like God to be at fault for like having so many people actually sincerely, really good people believe Jesus was God and died on the cross or came down. He's part of the Trinity, whatever. I know it's illogical, but nonetheless, it's like all of these things. Why didn't that get corrected? Why aren't they? Why? Why not work harder at convincing people if this is the universal message? Just get the whole world on the same page. What's the point, See, right? There, are, there. Are, for me, there are two possibilities and not a third. Either God doesn't exist, and these uh, and they will be completely explained by people who are trying to do their best to understand things around them, and they're a bit, um, you know, uh, they believe in miracles and superstitions, and that will be completely understood. Or there is a God who is an evil one. Uh, a benevolent God in that context, who is, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, has all uh, the power, has all the knowledge, is everywhere, he's got all the love, does not um, uh, compute to the conversation we're having right now. If there is a God, he's got to be uh, an evil one. Thank you uh, for that question. And, and I won't call him a God. I, I would call him an evil creator rather than he won't be a God at this point. Yeah, I got a book called that right back here. Anyway, uh, you know, it's called The Evil Creator, M. David Litwa wrote. Oh, is it well, okay? Yeah, literally, I'll grab it. You, you, you tempted me. Where is it at? Huh. Hiding underneath all the other books. There we go. So it's a very interesting book. Um, Constellation Pegasus, what word is used to replace philosophy? This is our last one. Then we'll take our caller and then we'll wrap things up for the show. What word is used to replace velocity in Arab, in Arab high school science books? How can velocity not exist? I don't think you were trying to like, or you might be muted, by the way. I don't think you were trying to um, say that like you can't convey the idea with multiple words. You're pointing out how language evolves. That was your point, right? Exactly right. It's it, 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 you can come up with the words, but then he he was claiming that the the language has not changed for millennia, as if it's a misfeature. And I was saying, no, no, that's a bug. A good language that sort of moves with the, with the time and it changes and renews itself and that's not a good thing for a language not to, to uh to change it's like a horrible what would, thing what would if we were back in 630s all right and out of nowhere let's say we could pop a car up we said hey this is a vehicle that drives it's not an animal okay and it it can go to 120 miles per hour people use it in sports etc cetera, etc cetera, you know whatever like would there be a new word invented would muhammad at that point go you know what, we need to figure out what we're going to name this in, in his own language. Uh, it makes you kind of wonder, you know. I don't even think that if we went back in time, a lot of these figures we talk about from Jesus, Moses, well, I don't think Moses actually existed, but nonetheless, if there was a guy, nonetheless, um, they would not be using these arguments that we're hearing being done today, is my point. I don't think they thought this way yeah. in the time that they were writing or so you see, language matches cultures. If a culture is about to die because it's not innovating, it's not contributing anything to the world around it, it's not doing anything to, to, to provide for its existence, its language will, will die and, and its culture will disappear. And that's happened many times over. Uh, language is a reflection of your culture and innovations. And a flourishing language, a simple language, that's why English is now one of the better languages of the world. And everybody is, there's the lingua franca. There's always a lingua franca. 
that is dominant and it's a language that is easy to understand it's got enough vocabulary to express oneself it used to be latin at some point it was greek at some point it was french at some point it was german at some point and and now it's english because it's an easy language it's it's a language of business it's, it's a language that uh, fl uh, uh, very flexible to, to introduce new words at a whim um and, and that's what's required um uh but for a language to stay put and be very proud of its heritage, but it, for example, the Hebrew spoken right now in Israel is very different than the ancient Hebrew. It's actually evolved way beyond that. So, no, you're yeah. right. The same with Greek. Go to yeah. Greece right now. You're going to find out it isn't Koine. It's very it's different. Not way it, the dialect, everything's changed. Uh, one more super chat. Sorry, Mr. Morpheus. Thank you. Okay, last one. Why do they say the Quran is a miracle when Surah 1759 says we refrain from sending signs, miracles, only because the men of former generations treated them as false? <laughs> That's a funny one. This was a, on the back of uh, Muhammad being attacked by the Qureshi uh, tribes and saying, you know bloody hell you, you're saying you're a prophet show us the trick <laughs> dudes uh, and and there was nothing forthcoming and say no 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 hold on we've got a good one for you uh you've killed every other prophet who showed you something so i'm not, I'm not falling for that mistake <laughs> <laughs> i i definitely want to look into this because if if it isn't pro miracle is it the hadith that's impacting the later like, hey, we need we need to root this stuff in some type of miraculous claim. Makes you wonder. Well, every every holy text has it, one thing and its opposites, and it depends what you're going to. There are actually other parts of the Quran that would actually say there are miracles, uh, 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 you know. And Hadith has supported Muhammad performed miracles. With it. We have the Isra and Miraj, uh, where he actually uh, was taken to the Aqsa Mosque overnight, mm -hmm. and then to the seventh heaven. Uh, and this is where he had a word with God and the Islamic prayer started with 50 prayers per day, 50 prayers per day. But then he went down and he met Moses. Uh, uh, and I, I'll make fun. I'll, I'll, I'll have a joke with my um, Jewish friends in the chat. I think you, Robert Herring, a couple of other people here and, uh, and met Moses and Moses said, no, 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 mate, you got to go up again and you got to haggle. <laughs> 50 is going to be too much. That's this is actually true. Uh, well, it's like, of course. <laughs> and he goes and, and they become 40, 30, and he keeps going up and down. And Moses keeps, no, 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 keep going back to him and to tell him to reduce the, the number of prayers until we got to five prayers per day. But they started wow. at 50. <laughs> That's actually that sounds like a Jewish thing for sure. So. <laughs> yeah, he taught Muhammad how to haggle, probably. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. Thank you so much, Mr. Morpheus. I'm having fun. All right. So we've got one more caller guys. We're getting close. I mean, we're, we're almost, we're getting close to three hours. I really want to do this again. I hope we have more callers jump on sooner. And what I'll say right now, before we take on our final caller is this, there's three other people in the chat after this caller. I won't be able to take your call today. We've gone so long, but if you will jump on the live sooner next time, I won't spend as much time with single individuals. We'll push, we'll push to the next caller sooner. Um, uh, but it's been a great day and I hope everybody continues to have a good one. Friendly Muslim. Welcome back to myth vision. I heard the words coming out of your mouth, Derek. You said friendly and you said Muslim in the same sentence. I thought you were calling for me. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I, I always enjoy you. Um, so what do you have for us today? My friend? Well, quick one. Cause you got to go and stuff like that. I, I, cause I, I was expecting 13 miracles and scientific miracles happening today. So I was just thinking for the next stream in a preparation of it either they're listed on your post like look we're going to go through these and then maybe we can have something prepared because it's really difficult it. when you don't know i mean you you got to debunk a miracle i need a bit of time you know yeah get, no this get is my, a... get my fair enough good, good call and, actually you know, fair enough very yeah. good call and, yeah. and to be honest with you i've been doing so much with like organizing for this show and that show and getting prepped um it went past me, but that's a great criticism. I need to put this in the description, even of this video. So anyone who's wanting to maybe before they go two and a half hours, they might want to know what is going to get yeah, discussed. I, I'm looking at some of the miracles and I'm like, okay, fine. Well, there's this paper, but I can't share that on screen. I don't know copyright issues or, or a video that's on it. And it, it may counter what um, my, my friend here is saying. So maybe, or, or second thought is, all right, fine. You do your next stream. And then after that, we kind of arrange for, all right, let's counteract these 13. And we've got something to concentrate on because uh, that might be a better 
better way of doing it. I will definitely yes. do that. My question to you is, are oh. you uh, are you convinced by this apologetic or are you one of the ones who are like, look, I don't use the Quran as evidence for science or proof that God knew something 1400 years ago. Um, what, 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 where do you stand? Um, right now, as of today, I'm kind of in the middle because I was involved in the discussion and, and they were talking about uh, a book of science versus a book of science and where were the first claims of the scientific miracles. And then um, to counter even that argument, there are legitimate scientists who uh, I was actually looking for him um, for, while you were talking on a video I saw. And he's actually a proper scientist and goes through academic research and com does comparative to the Quran. And, you know, so he's a big deal. He's a qualified scientist, not sort of a, a polemicist or, or an apologist. So I was trying to find him also. So there's two other guys I've got in mind. Um, and I'd like actually... you to send me, if you don't mind emailing yeah. me, just yeah. send me the links because I'm curious. I was just reading an article on the particular gentleman that had scientists come over and he kind of swindled them into uh, sitting down at a table. Hey, let's bring the family, butter them up, give them gifts, things like that. Convince them, give them money, pay them, all of these things. And then they come out going, this wasn't like, hey, we just want to hear what real science says on this. It's let me read a verse to you and then convince you, even when you deny it or try to find alternate explanations. None of those were convincing, of course, the Muslim that was bringing them over, but they kept pressuring to get them to be convinced that no, 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 this is true. And we need to find a way that it is. And until we get someone to say it is, uh, we're not stopping. That's what it seemed like in the article. I can actually post that if you would like. Um, Wall Street Journal article that is literally Western scholars play key role in touting science of the Quran. And there are multiple scientists that are involved in this that felt, you know, the guy was super nice, but very pressuring on trying to get them to nod yes and go along with it. One of the guys even says in quotes after, like he took me out of context and they recorded the whole thing. And, you know, you kind of wonder what, how what much. And I just, I, I just would like to add one thing, if you don't mind. And also issuing a book at the end of a, an endeavor. Uh, this is not a work of science. This is a work of literature. Uh, a Brief History of Time by uh, Hawking isn't a scientific paper. It's a commercial work. So if, if somebody's going to King Saud or King Fahd in Saudi Arabia, and at the end of it issue um, a book uh, that is not science, uh, it needs to be a scientific paper, it needs to be peer reviewed, and it needs to have scientific consensus at some point to, to raise into the, the realm of proper science. Other than that, it's just commercial and personal opinion. But yeah, any final words from you, my friend? And yeah, then... no, no. I mean, the, the guy that I, 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 I'll I find him out. I've got to dig out because okay. he was in, they had an Arabic speaker, um, a linguist, and they were sort of going through things. And he was very honest. And he said, look, sometimes people are taking things that aren't scientific miracles and blowing them out of proportion. And when you do right. have legitimate comparisons from real science, then they're being ignored and not taken seriously. So um, he is okay. definitely somebody I will look into. you. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make a suggestion on uh, a follow-up stream or, or having all the information ahead of time so we can actually prepare for it. If, if I'll tell you, I have a friend of mine who, when I point out all of these dubious, miraculous claims from Christian churches and such throughout the centuries, um, he'll go, okay, I grant there's a lot of fraud and there's a lot of hocus pocus and they're making stuff up, but that doesn't mean all of them are not you know there's there might be a miracle in somewhere in all of these situations so i'll be i'm interested to hear the evidence oftentimes what ends up happening is we just don't know and so when it becomes a, i don't know and we don't have an explanation because there's no other criteria to really test it or whatever see yeah if but, there's but a way, there's a way it's a miracle remember one thing here there might be it's not a it's not a miracle it has to be a scientific fact so if there is something that's been prophesized in the quran and end up being a scientific fact that could be coincidental and it still doesn't mean it's from god uh, and it can mean uh based on observation and that observation happened to be accurate but remember this is a claim coming from the divine creator of the universe which means one mistake one mistake in the allegation makes the whole thing void unless you're not a unless you don't tout that the entire book is uh divine or something that would be the only other thing i can imagine partially uh, divine <laughs> right there are christians who hold held to the idea that they, or still did like me absolute 
inerrant infallibility of the Bible. Then their whole world comes tumbling down. This guy right here, when he realizes, oh, snap, I was wrong. But you uh, see, uh, Derek, yeah. the Quran makes an outrageous claim. The words of the Quran are completely uh, authored and composed by God himself. And uh, not a word has changed since the beginning of time. These were not uh, 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 inspiration given to people, and they were reflected up, upon them by, by people who wrote them. These are direct uh, revelations of God himself. Oh, well, quick quick two points, and I'll, and I'll leave it there. Uh, brother Nizam is, is a well-respected brother in the Dawa scene also. I mean, he's, um, he's on, on the Dawa channels. He's been on for nice years. Um, very knowledgeable brother. So I'm, I'm actually glad that he, he came in and um, I'm with him on the sort of swoon theory. I've always been uh, of, of the swoon theory. I, I think that's more plausible in certain cases. I think but, it's uh, more plausible than a resurrection all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so say love you, my friends. All right, I'll let you go. Have a good rest of the day and uh, take care. Thank you, my friendly Muslim. I look forward to talking again. Um, before we go, I saw a question kind of comment that I thought is necessary for you and I to answer. Are you down with that, Hanny? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Everybody in the queue, we will definitely take your call next time. Please call in. I want to have these conversations. These are fun. And I hope everybody in the chats enjoyed them. Here is the chat comment. Tinkle Tink, thank you for the comment. For a non-believer, why is Derek looking at religion 24-7? Okay. I, I want to put your name in there, right? <laughs> Why is Hanny looking at religion 24 seven, right? It's not all I look at. It's not all I do. It's definitely a major part of what I do. And for me, it's because I'm actually fascinated. If you asked yesterday during my live stream, if you asked Erica guts at Gibbon, why is this girl interested in the anthropology and evolution of hominid species? What's what? Why is she into that? Why is she so um, interested in knowing the history of our evolutionary, uh, you know, history in the world we live in, how we came to be the where we are? And the reason I mention her in that is that I see religion as part of our evolutionary process. I once it was the it was a magic trick that I believed in. I believed in it just like David Blaine convinces people he has real magical powers. Then someone said, hey, you want to come see the trick behind the curtain? Let me show you things you're never going to hear at church. They're never going to tell you because they can't. And maybe they don't even know it. But let me show you some stuff. And I started looking at things. And when I did, it blew my mind that this had me clawed so deep that I thought the end of the world was coming. I was I had guilt that I had brought a child into this world, that he was going to have to live through the final days where God is going to burn up the earth. All of these things, I believed I was going to cook in hell if I wasn't righteous or for whatever I wasn't chosen by God, I wasn't obedient enough, something went wrong, whatever it might be. I was so deeply in, impacted and affected that now that I have found out that this is a man thing, that we have created these concepts and observations in the natural world around us and from our own experiences, et cetera, I am a bit obsessed with trying to understand why we got here. Why did we end up believing in these things? Why do we love stories? And this is kind of in that scientific anthropological approach. Why do people believe in gods? What, what Did they mistake a star that flew across the sky or a comet or that because certain celestial signs move differently in the sky. And they thought, man, that's, that's gotta be God or that Venus rises every time it's spring. And they're going that, that God we call Venus, that morning star or whatever brought life to planet earth because every time it comes up, so does green and life and fertility. I mean, I'm just making the point. I'm obsessed with this stuff because first of all, most of the world believes in something most of the world, most humans believe in some type of religious cultural background. And so I love learning about this stuff. So if you think there's other motives behind it, you, you would fall right into the line of an apologist who thinks that uh, Derek secretly knows that God is real. And he, come on, no, not at all. So I want your response rather than me rambling. 
I remember uh, it was a very, I'm, I'm not sure you've seen this before, but Christopher Hitchens was asked the same question uh, once before, and I loved his response. And uh, you've actually, uh, I don't know if you've watched it before, but you've spoken almost like him in, in so many different ways. Uh, but to me, uh, first of all, I don't uh, speak about religion all the time. It's actually the, in my, on my channel, it's about 10 to 15 percent maybe of the contents. Um, the rest are pretty much science, philosophy, psychology. Uh, I care about it because it affects a lot of people. Um, uh, I would probably would want to take the, the harsh bits and pieces of it. I'd be very happy of a watered down Islam or Christianity that is in the hearts that makes people go to the mosque or the church and, and hold hands and sing and feel happy and feel good about their fellow humans. Uh, w w but I would like, I would prefer a version of humanity where their beliefs are uh, closer to reality. Match the, 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 the closer you believe matches uh, reality, uh, the better the outcome is for, for, for everyone because it's going to be, your action is going to be predicated on the, knowledge, uh, logic, and you're going to end up doing great things. Uh, they might not uh, improve your morality. We're going to need to have another conversation. Science is not concerned with that. That's when you're going to need philosophy and ethics for that. But these are a different conversations, but they're all void from the su of the supernatural. I think the human condition, we struggle together. Uh, we're, um, we're here. We're here alone. We're, we only have each other. Uh, and we're going to have to solve our problems our own. We, we just need to grow up and uh, face up to our problems all by ourselves and uh, uh, get away from the supernatural because it's never really helped us. I'm with you. So there's many reasons it's become more important in my life, even than when I was a religious person, finding out how this tribalism divides us. There are groups today from white supremacists to various different groups, you name it, they're special, others aren't, they're chosen, others aren't. Well, science is gonna debunk the supremacy concept that somehow Caucasians like yesterday that seemed that that was the point of Robert Wonder. Seffer. Yeah, science destroys that idea that, well, we came from a different stem and they're from much more primitive versions get out of here. Aliens and gods came down and made us, but not you. Shut up. I'm tired of that. I'm sick of the harmful ideas that come out of people's mouths like that. But when it comes to other uh, traditional views, like there's a lot of misogyny. There's a lot of sexist uh, views. There are a lot of things that are just, we're past that, or we should be trying to get past that. So there's a lot of motivation on my part to give people what is really being said that alone usually gets people blown away. Like I was blown away when I found out what a lot of these original context meant. What you, you mean to tell me that's not the Trinity in Genesis one. It's a council of gods, plural. Oh snap. We're in trouble. We got a problem on our hands. And then interpretation. I love finding out all of that stuff. So most people who are skeptics like me aren't into the theological interpretive models and finding out what, who, what, when, where, and how, how they interpreted, how they understood it. I do. I like getting into the nerdy details because, hey, you can contend. You can have a conversation with someone who is sophisticated and they're in the bubble. Yeah. There's just a lot of reasons why I love doing this. Uh, that, that's yeah. why I'm not an anti-theist. Uh, I'm, I'm content that religion served a certain a, extremely good purpose. It, it actually was very helpful. Uh, it, it helped us to unite around a, a common idea. Right. And, 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 and that's brilliant. We have not evolved to know the truth. We have evolved to survive. And if an idea, even though it's not true, would help you survive as a group, then it's very benefit. That's why religion is prevalent. It's, right. It stays. It's very strong. It does certain things that secular ideas cannot uh, cannot do. If you go to somebody's uh, a funeral and they just lost a three years old baby, uh, us atheists will we'll struggle. We'll mumble. We, we, we wouldn't have anything to say, uh, and we're gonna have we, we're gonna have to develop a, a language uh, to console each other. Uh, but that's why religion has been very strong for quite some time, and we're going to need to replace that. But it's it's time to let go. It's like that fastidious tale or the, the wisdom teeth that we no longer need. They're going to go. Evolution is going to take them away, and so are the means right. uh, that we no longer need. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I really do appreciate everybody uh, that came on today, everybody's super chats, all the love and 
you name it. I can't tell you how I appreciate it. Hanny, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. You know, giving your arguments and hanging out with uh, callers. Let's do this again. I hope that we can. I hope everybody who called in felt comfortable. Of course, even we disagreed, like they thought that, that I'm hosting fairly and being nice. So that's my goal. Like <laughs> I want to be a good person. It's more than being right. It's, it's also about getting along with my fellow man and enjoying what I do. So thank you. Any final words from you? No, uh, uh, Derek, you, you wonderful channel, wonderful contents. I mean, the, the, the variation of late as well. I'm very, very impressed. You know, you're now uh, mingling science and a bit of philosophy and a bit of religion. It's wonderful stuff. I mean, uh, I'm going to urge my any, anybody who's watching me from my channel. This is the place to be at the moment. The, the number of academics are about to turn up in, on your channel and mm -hmm. uh, you do a wonderful, a wonderful job. You're such a good host and you, you know how to grab the information and present them in, in an easy way. Thank you so much. I'm a little envious of the colors in the background that you have. You you really do kick butt on that background, man. <laughs> I, I, I got to step my game up, man. I got you know, a little, little neon lights, but everybody go subscribe to his channel. I will post this in the chat again for everybody who's tuned in. If you haven't done so, please consider going there. He has a lot of great stuff, uh, lots of science. You also speak Arabic, and so you're, most of your shows, from what I could tell, you're also doing a lot more in English now, but most of your shows have been in Arabic, correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to mix them up now. So I, I, I'm, I was born sort of bilingual, uh, Egyptian father, Irish mother, so I do, I do want to cover both areas, but um, yeah, I want to do a balanced... Um, um, sort of shows going going forward. Well, I just commented the uh, YouTube channel. Thank you, Doc Pleroma, for that. He says, awesome, guys. Fascinating. And um, also, he has a Patreon. You can go and follow him on his Patreon. I have a Patreon. Please consider helping us out so we can keep doing this. I, I love you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Weekend's coming up. I told everybody I'm taking weekends off. But this weekend, I do have – I'm hosting a debate on the authorship of isaiah did first of all who wrote it right is it multiple authors in the book in the bible uh dr kip davis and matthew gronger i hope i'm pronouncing his last name right i gotta take a look at that and then there's jonathan sheffield and a girl named emma that'll be joining they believe that isaiah actually prophesied um the king cyrus the great while the other academics say no and they're going to get into this deep on Saturday. I don't usually work weekends now. Told my wife and my family I'm going to start yeah. taking off. But this one I already had scheduled for months. And we're going to be making it happen this Saturday. So I hope to see you there. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. You too. And never forget, we are Myth Vision. Don't any of you have that guts to play for blood? I'm your huckleberry. That's just my game.